From the Dice Abide Live studios, it's Late Night War Games with your hosts, Adam and John. Oh my God, we're back. We're back. <laughs> it's been a minute. It's been a year. It it's has. been a year. <laughs> Happy New Year <laughs> to you too, Grizzly Troy. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Adam. You know me as the Dice Abide. And I'm John, also known as Wise Can Sai. And tonight we're joined by Frank. Yay, Hello. Frank. How's it going, man? Uh, I have been, I've been better. Yeah. <laughs> so some of you may know that, uh, um, part of the multiple jobs I do is, uh, COVID-19 therapeutics research. And so going into this winter season, I knew well that Omicron wasn't fucking around and, you know, like masking, not doing anything fun, not doing nonsense, like going to bars and restaurants. And yet somehow. My family, my my son tested positive two days ago. My younger son, who is too young to be vaccinated, which is the main worry, and my wife are all symptomatic. I thought I was also, I was like, oh, I'm double vax boosted. I'm fine. And then last night I got that like uh, kind of gunky feeling you have in your throat. Yep. The swallow. So you can't fall asleep. That sucked. And so like, it's not like I'm fine. It's just uh, everyone's like on the upswing. I, I now... My youngest, who's three, he's not vaccinated. I think, I like, I think he's now on the upswing. He's trajectorying upwards throughout the woods. But like, I like playing games and rolling dice. If you do so, please, please, masks work. They work. Oh my god. Anyway, but even that being said, Omicron is so infectious that like, yeah. if you have someone in your household who is not vaccinated, like, um, or immunocompromised, like cancer a cancer survivor or someone under the age of five, maybe think TTS is a thing. Tabletop simulator is a thing. Maybe like maybe click some buttons. I love you all. I love that. I, I, I love this hobby. I love meeting up and yelling at your opponent in, in the face, but like, let's be smart, responsible adults here. Here, here. Yeah. That yeah. Is that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's my spiel. Yeah. My voice is not as bad as Adam's. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, life is fun. Oh Yay. boy, yeah. At least it's, at least it's all my voice now. All right. Well, uh, gentlemen, what are you drinking? Frank, I have uh, I have just uh, some Sprite for the carbonation from my throat. There you go. Excellent. How are you, John? I am having some of the lovely Toki whiskey. Thank you again, Grizzly Troll, for sending. Well, there it you over. go. Uh, it is it is delicious and lovely, and it is a extra helping because uh, my keyboard stopped working at the start of the show, which is why we're a few minutes late. Sorry about that. This is my keyboard now. It's amazing. It only accepts every other key press. <laughs> Super good. <laughs> Highly recommended. Holy cow, that's fantastic. Uh, I am also uh, enjoying a bubbly beverage. Mine though is a sweet as IPA, but it's for the carbonation for my throat. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Do you guys do you guys have have burners out out in Portland? Uh, nope. nope. I don't think so. I've, what is it? Have, have, okay, burners is the best soda ever made. It's mostly available in um, the Midwest in the Michigan area, but I have seen it uh, as far away as DC. Um, so I'm like, I, I I know it's in the Midwest. Um, it's like the flavor palette is like right between ginger ale and cream soda. It has that sweetness of cream soda, but it's not like if I drink a whole cream soda, I have to brush my teeth afterwards. It's it's too much. It's but it's it's not that. It's delightful. It's like medicine. If it, like if my kids got sick, <laughs> I would give them burners. Fair enough. And I wish I I'll wish it was available it. where I was. Yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, cheers. 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 And uh, why don't you kick it off with some news, John? Yeah. So a few things. Um, there's going to be some changes this year, uh, primarily the first of which is we're moving to a bi-monthly schedule. So every, every other week, um, yeah, it's going to be the thing is, is a, I can never figure it out if it's bi-monthly or semi-monthly. So every other week we'll be doing the thing. Uh, we'll be focusing primarily, I guess, on one show will be DreamBot 9, another show will be Corpus Belly stuff. 
Uh, and then, of course, we'll mix in all the other games we all love talking about as we go, as we have news about them, and as things to talk about. So none of the content you love is going away, uh, but this is just sort of, A, giving us a little more time um, for our families, also giving us more time to prep between shows, a uh, billion other reasons, yep. keep it sustainable, all these other things. So, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a positive a positive uh, change overall. So we're starting, this is the first show of the new schedule, so you will see us again in two weeks from today, not not every every week. Uh, and next week will be about Infinity stuff. So uh, given that, given that Adam sort of lost his voice, and given that the um, <laughs> the the uh, the show two weeks from now is going to be an Infinity based show, we're going to delay the Broman Academy paint judging until then. So apologies to all you lovely painters out there. Thank you again for sending stuff in. Uh, I will go ahead and um, and uh, uh, you know get everything ready for that show. I mean it's ready now, but like you know it'll be all perfect and shiny for that. Uh, and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll do it then. So that way also Adam and Frank can, Frank can go to bed. That's the, that's the game. Plan. Yep. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so that's right. basically the, the main sort of show news. Um, you know, we're not sure if this is a permanent change. We're trying it out. So bear with us for the first couple of months as we, as we sort of kick, kick the tires, so to speak. Uh, we do have a, a correction, which I think is one of the very few we've had on the show. We never make mistakes except for this one time. Um, so <laughs> time we did. Yeah, right. So we made a mistake in the uh, last episode with Willet. We uh, with the fight with the Oniwaban versus the Uberfall. Um, so we'll make sure to have the Asawira defend its title against the Uberfall before it's allowed to move on. So that will be the the, the next the next tournament yeah, so of we, champions. We do a show. tournament of champions. Yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a, a a whole a whole thing for that. Okay, so that's sort of the the big show news stuff. Um, not a whole lot else uh, on to blog news, right? So um, I'll be posting a bunch more missions for uh, this quarter's painting, as well as uh, a new lumbering sprocket mission. So for all you heavy gear fans out there, uh, but for Broman Academy, uh, the new mission is hold me back, which is basically go first and hold at least two things back. So looking at you, Starmata players with your alphas and so on, right? You can hold back more things, but in this particular case, uh, the idea is to go first, hold back two things and, I write up why uh, that might be interesting for you to try out and so on. But those are those are things you should you should give a shot. Uh, let us know how that. What do that you mean goes. hold back? What do I mean by hold back? I mean uh, to, to hold two things in reserve is what I mean to say. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I am now realizing that I can't hit the the button to change the the slide, so I have to do it with my mouse, which is obnoxious. But. Uh, <laughs> We have some happy near New Year wishes from uh, DreamPod Nine. So why don't you tell us oh, about that's that? That's right. Yep. So uh, Robert has given the world a sneak preview of the Griffin from Eden. So this is the concept art that they're making the miniature from, um, and it's really cool. It looks. I mean, it looks like it fits in the Heavy Gear universe, but it looks unlike anything from the Terra Nova factions. Um, Super cool, big stompy flying robot with like grenade launchers on its shoulder, pe- uh, shoulders, and like a machine gun in its arm. Mm-hmm. New faction, new faction from the ground up. It looks super cool. It is very different. Yes, uh, it is. It is pretty awesome. I've seen some additional things, and I, I am excited. And that is all I'm going to say <laughs> because otherwise I'll get in trouble. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's a thing. Um, other other fun stuff from other. Uh, our other sponsor, Corpus Belly. We've got uh, the yeah. Infinity Winter Seminar pictures in. Uh, we've got a new resculpt, I guess is the best way to put this. This is the resculpt of the old Yan Yan. Um, yeah, they like that old model so much that when they made a new one, they decided to make the new one the old one. And yes, I'm okay I, with it. I'm furious because I have I already have four Yan Yan. Uh-huh. This one is just so awesome. I'm like, do I just need to buy her and not glue her wings on and make her another monk. Like she's, she's amazing. She's great. She, she's fantastic. But I have no need for her. Well, so the thing is the old Yan Yan, there wasn't really a good wing attachment situation. It was just sort of like you, yeah. it's just like you, you glue the, the cross sectional area of the wing to the backpack and then like hope for the best. Right. 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 So but, this is a huge improvement for that reason alone. Also for yeah, those of a, us who are lucky. The classic model. Yeah, it's great. And an update update to the sword to the uh, the big uh, you know Daido kind of uh, yeah 
style is really nice too. And and you know, I like I think Frank's idea is excellent. This could easily be a monk uh, with a little bit of green stuff. Green stuff. Oh sure. Right. Like so, those of you looking for for a new a new thing that would be quite reasonable. What else we got? Um, we've got uh, a new Valeria sculpt with the uh, the classic nomad. Uh, I I think that's supposed to be a DSCCW, but so she's got her combi with pitcher uh, and her little yep. like like uh, small of the back uh, scab scabbard for her knife, which is nice. Um, and some some nomad appropriate belts and random random gubbins. So. Yeah, pretty good. So for, for for those for those of, those of us who uh, have defiance and may or may not be annoyed that we've already painted our Valerias, uh, I see a, a wonderful Mary Problems proxy because oh, sure. the current Mary oh. Problems sculpt with uh, standing very stiff, like she's got a, a, a flagpole up her butt, not not so great. This one much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a great great looking design. Yeah, I'll or. Abiscus and, and Dan are saying in, uh, in, in chat that uh, turning the yon, yon into a hunter is also a good idea if you want the tag. Oh, yeah. Proxy. Yes, true. So those are, those are also yeah. possible. Uh, and then we've got these really creepy uh, sci-fi fuzz bots for O12, which I, which I think is absolutely appropriate. Uh, yeah. Right on brand. Yeah, they, it, they, 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 it's uncomfortable uh, to look at and kind of spidery, uh, but they... That nailed it, perfect. No, no, no notes. <laughs> it's yes. it, it's it, yeah. You know, they're they're close to Tachikoma, but they've got more of the like the the modern sci-fi aesthetic to them. Sure. Mm -hmm. All the, the, the all the random panels with the X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things have to have X's and lots yep. of extra pole holes and. Yeah, I I can tell you that whenever I design enclosures for any system that I make. It definitely, I definitely tell the uh, mechanical engineers, you need to mill out an X for me. Otherwise, it's not complete. Yeah, it won't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they look kind of like ticks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, they're they're cool. They're definitely uh, not human. If one of those rolled up to you on the street, you <laughs> would not know what to do with it. <laughs> Truckstar has it. Ticks with left shark fins. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. It's... But this tick, instead of draining you of blood, it will shoot Panzerfausts at you. Is, it, is there you a Panzerfaust? Fuzz bot? No, no, no. I mean, it, it will, it will be, it will replenish your. Panzer oh, Faust. sure, sure, sure. Oh, it is yeah, full yeah. of them. It will. Yes. <laughs> it is a, it is a reverse parasite. Yeah, no, they're looking nice. You know, I'm glad to see. Is this the, the first? I guess it's not a resculpt, right? But it's the first modern. Um, of the Evo bots. Uh, I believe that's the case. Yeah. I think the most, yeah, I don't think there's anyone that's more like, I, I don't even know which one's more recent. I guess, I guess the combined one might be, but that's, sure, like, but that's, that's, just, a, that's a weird one. Part of the regular remote yeah. box. I'm not sure which, what the, the most recent one was. Yeah. yeah but so I wonder looks, if we'll see some great. updates to others. Yeah, I mean they're gonna go through. I'm sure all of them, but it looks Eventually. fantastic. It's very cool. Yeah. Is that That's, all the news? That is that is the news. Excellent. It's hobby time. Let's talk about some toys. Let's do that it. We've been working on. Well, you got queued up for. Uh, I have been doing a lot of work on Jovian oh. Wars. Um, nice. Which is, uh, yeah, taking up a huge amount of time. I, I knew it would be a lot of work and a lot of time. I did not expect it to completely consume my hobby time because <laughs> Jovian Wars and Jovian Chronicles are actually many games, uh, sort of glued yeah. in one. So, um, yeah, I have plans. It's it's going to be cool. I'm I'm pretty excited about uh, the steps that are 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 uh, are coming down the path. I suppose. Um, yeah, so it, it may behoove those of you interested out there to know that my most recent DreamPod 9 order uh, is full of the Lightning Strike minis. So I have a complete <sighs> set now. I'll just leave it at that. Um, okay. Yeah. Why would you do that? I don't know. I think they look cool, first Wait, of all. That's, than... that's very reasonable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I did that thing. Also, uh, version 1.22 is now officially released. 
Uh, it was sort okay. of soft released a while ago. Uh, now it's official. It is stable. It is the thing you should play. Um, if you want the cards for said release, you can go to jovianwars.blog, and then there's a link to all the unit cards. Uh, and then I I am working on a uh, let me turn this off. There we go. So I am working Hard on a, uh, a fleet builder. It's taking a while because as it turns out, building an army builder is hard, um, which is why you know <laughs> it takes a while. But you can print all these out uh, right now and 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 uh, go ahead and do the thing and cut them out. So sorry, I know it's a bit of a pain, uh, but this is what I've got so far. At least, at least the rules and the stats are current and correct. So we'll we'll start there. Uh, this is definitely That's a, the important a part. yeah. So so you can play with real real numbers now instead of the ones out of the old uh, old PDF. Uh, and so these are real. And then of course I'll have I'll have the uh, I'll have the one point two point three cards and rules out soon, and we can start playtesting those too. But yeah, that's what I've been working on. It always looks like a lot. <laughs> there's a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, there's so much going on. Yeah, I've, I, I've introduced a whole new unit type in 1, 2, 3, so that'll be, that'll be pretty excited. Uh, so, Abyssus, the new Broman painting category will be released very soon. Um, I have been stuck with a lot of uh, work backlog at the moment, so I haven't had a chance to to build all the art. The it's it's uh, yeah a lot of tech problems. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but yes, I will be release, <laughs> uh, releasing it uh, by the end of the week for sure. Uh, that's a promise. Definitely, we'll have the new Roman painting stuff out as well as the lumber Rings bracket stuff out. Uh, the painting contest results will be announced next show, which is in two weeks. So. Sorry for the delay. All of those artists. Just a reminder: if you're one of the artists who submitted, there everything you sent in is fantastic, uh, and please share away, and uh, you know, your, share your beautiful work uh, anywhere you'd like to. So you are you, the embargo is lifted. You may do whatever you like with your <laughs> with your stuff. But yeah, John, awesome. I want to say I'm just horribly and personally I am horribly and personally offended that you dare have a, a family life and you know trying to manage a, a soon to be increasing family size how dare you you should be devoting every one of your waking hours to our hobby whims <laughs> yeah John. i i i sort of am <laughs> <laughs> so so there's there you have there you have that but um yeah yeah so uh i got started building my takere i think that's how you say it uh kickstarter mm -hmm. so Oh, this was, this this was the was this the um, cyberpunk but sports ball? Yeah, yeah. I kept see, I kept seeing ads for this. I was like, these look so cool. And then I saw one of them holding a ball. I was like, immediately just not interested. <laughs> thank you. No, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I love Blood Bowl, so this is like Infinity Bowl, and uh, yeah, you gotta give it a shot. Um, the minis, the minis, I think are fine. I think they're I think they are they are decent quality miniatures. Um, I do have some complaints, but those complaints are mostly like, they're not as good as Corvus Belly, which uh, nobody is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? I mean, it's really hard uh, to top CV and, and metal quality. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some 3D printing banding, you know, that happens here and there mm -hmm. um, in the Masters. But a... overall, yeah, there's yeah. some spots that can be a little bit better detailed, but I mean, for a company, for their first miniatures game, I think, um mm -hmm. and just for the you know the whole new line of sculpts they're they're pretty nice overall i was i was impressed i was expecting a bit worse um they're a little bit more anime than infinity miniatures so like the heads are a little bit bigger the facial features a little more uh exaggerated um but yeah so i started off with the the darken team which is very much uh based off of akira so you can even see like you know um, like Kaneda in his motorcycle turned into armored suit in the back. That's pretty great. Nice. It's um, really cool. So yeah, I'd whip them up at least, get them built. Have you, have you played it back. yet? PJ wants to know how, oh. how it compares to Dreadball. Uh, I haven't played either Dreadball or this, so I, I don't know extra. Um, but as soon as I get a second team built, I'll try to get John to play. Sounds good. Uh, well, you've got some other stuff going on, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I have been assembling uh, my Necromunda miniatures. Didn't I show these last week? 
Um, this is the one you sent me, but this is a more different one. Oh, yeah. So my Necromunda gang that I've been building, I'm using, I'm doing a outcast gang. So it's super customizable and kind of do whatever you want. So I'm doing this like whole outcast noble thing. And for my champions, I've been using the Gaunt's Ghosts from 40K mm. and swapping out their weapons here and there. Uh, and then to make them feel a little bit more under high V, I've started sculpting rat pelts and turning their cloaks into big rat pelts. Oh, that's clever. My Skaven don't like that at With all. With green stuff. That's that's fine. I'll just have to so, have to murder you with Skaven. It'll be okay. Yeah, right. But no, we had a lot of fun with those, and uh, I got to play a game with Obi, which we'll talk about later. But nice. Yeah, Necromunda. It's they're, they're fun. It's a fun project game. Cool, cool, cool. Well, Frank, what have you been working on? I um I have so much Shazvasti because of Defiance, and I <laughs> very very stubbornly I I really want to play I want to play the the campaign, and I have I ha- like you know COVID and Omicron notwithstanding, I have four people who have well three other people who have agreed to play with me, and who, we've all selected our characters. So I'm everyone for the first mission. I had to paint all the doohickeys, and I had to paint the characters, and I'm I'm so close now. I um. I'm working on uh, Caden First Strike right now. I have Kiang, um, or however you say, uh, Mr. Heavy Infantry Man. Um, I now have all the Shazvasti who are available. I've done Ms. Ms. Speculo right there, who, despite how plain she is, I still find her a market improvement uh, over the um, the N2 Speculo, mm-hmm. who's just like, I appreciate that they were very alien, but it just seemed like alien just like weird alien rather than characterful alien like the the new shazvasi design seems like they had a very like clear focused morphology and anatomy whereas like the n2 design were just like they were kind of like weird and groobly and technically it seemed very imprecise so i'm i I like these if you go on to the next one uh the next image yeah uh so guilos are ava one and uh you know the shazvasi pack comes with a Gwylos and Defiance came with a Gwylos and I was like well I have two Gwylos there's a heavy rocket launcher with both MSV2 and Albedo uh Obi is really good at green stuff and I'm not so I gave him the dossier art for um for the new knocked for missile launcher uh and I was like yeah. Obi make 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 this in green stuff and I'm gonna slap it on the Gwylos and then I did that and Obi delivered it to me and then they released the new knocked for missile launcher so you're welcome you're welcome, everyone. I take full credit for that. Once <laughs> again, after I did, I did so earlier in uh, in last year with uh, with the Shang Chi after com- customizing the APM HMG. Yep. Frank, uh, Frank, is, Frank is moving CB's schedule along single handedly. Is what we're hearing today. Blah ha ha. Looking forward and, to it. CB's hard work, then, notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and then the next picture. Um, this. This fellow has just been sitting on my desk for like literally two years gathering dust. Oh my God, yeah. And he's and he's not, you know, he's not available in the first mission, but I just was like, one, enough is enough. And two, um, I really want to run that Harris of him, um, the nano screen M, M- drone and oh, the yeah. Gwylos MSV Torpedo. Um, it's expensive, and I feel like the Gwylos is like bit is is important enough and not quite durable enough that unless you really can confidently outrange uh an hmg that you really shouldn't be posting up co- posting up the guilos in um in turn one for aro duty mm. um unless you really desperately think you need to control warband spam um but uh so i, I think it'll, it, it's it's going to be a uh, a more you know it, it's going to be like a kind of a kg or harris but i'm looking forward to like slingshotting an m drone forward targeting it with with victor uh, targeting something with victor and then you know slapping it with missiles or whatever whatever what have you it seems it seems like very right. it's very order uh, efficient. very toolboxy mm-hmm. yes yes so yes. so uh defoc wants to know if you have any yimao in your queue Ooh. uh i do have uh let's see i i have a yimao with panzerfaust and i um i made a resin uh cast of her so I can make copies of her and out, out instead of a Panzerfaust, I can give her like a multi rifle or something. Oh. So if there's a particular loadout, Defoc, why don't you sound off in the chat and I'll see I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can 
uh, twist uh, CB's arm once more. <laughs> yes, right. yes. Force that schedule on. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm kind of curious to see a uh, general general release. Email box? Yeah. Okay. Email box with a Tian Gao, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Exactly. Yeah, Risk is, is uh, of like mind here for sure. Um, okay. I, I, I saw I saw someone I saw someone online say, "Oh well, the Gmail hacker." Now, if only it were playable. And I was like, "How do you not consider a mimetic <laughs> a mimetic MSV1 profile with an AP spit? Like, what are you doing in an edition where tags are more prevalent? Like, I played a double Oyoroi against um against White Banner." And it was a lot of fun, and the, except I only put two wounds on the blue wolf, and I was able to kill two of the Yay Mao. And then the blue wolf and the Yay Mao do what AP Spitfires do, and they ate both the Oya Roy. Um, so, like, yep. yeah, they, they kill tags. They're really good at doing that. Yep, absolutely. Kill them dead. I think that's all we got for Hobby. Yeah, plenty of hobby stuff. I've, I've been having a lot of fun with these plastic hits. But all right, so uh, I, I've had some media that I've consumed the last couple of weeks that I thought I would would talk a little bit about. Um, so I recently, uh, I'm sure as many people, watched Matrix Resurrections. I have not I, seen it yet. What's your, what's your, uh, give me a number rating. I really liked it. I, I, I don't know if I believe in number ratings. Um, Fair enough. As in, like, I liked it enough that I've probably watched it three times. Oh wow! Okay. You know, which is which is about what I do with movies I like when they first come out. Sure. Especially thanks to streaming, where it's like, cool, Dune. I'm gonna watch you many times. Because mm-hmm. um, I really like, I, I really like getting the details of movies that I enjoy. Um, and no, I enjoyed Matrix Resurrections. I think that if you enjoyed matrix because it was like a total alpha male shoot 'em up fest with like nerds and guns and chicks and leather uh you're not gonna like this but if you enjoy uh a lot of Wachowski's work uh especially if you like sense eight then you're really gonna like uh i think matrix resurrections so it was it definitely they definitely did a lot to um kind of I don't know, not really force, but drive home kind of the. Uh, I'm just trying to think of the right way to say it, and uh, I'm not feeling great, so my words are escaping me. But there's a lot of play the, with the concept the of like theme, binary decision the commentary, making. the philosophy. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of it to do with like the philosophy um, of this whole idea of like binary decision making and how they're it's not really a thing. Because we oh, I see. Like that not, not everything is a black and white choice. Is that sort of? The, I haven't seen it either. Not everything is a black and white choice, and even when it is a black and white choice, like if you're going down the road, you're 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 trying to get somewhere. You get to a stop sign. Left or right isn't a choice. You the, the one direction takes you to where you're going, and the other one does not. So like, it's not really a decision point. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of what that says. And yeah, no, I I enjoyed it. There's also a bit of. Um, uh, definitely some identity referential uh, themes in there. Mm-hmm. So like Neo is constantly suppressing who he really is, which also makes sense with like, you know, Lana Wachowski and being transgender. So like, there's a lot of really interesting themes that uh, you can pick up on. Yeah. I enjoyed it overall. I also got to watch don't look up which Lauren Lauren best described it as melancholia meets idiocracy. So if you've seen either of those, you know, melancholia is this. I've seen, I've seen idiocracy, about... but not melancholia. Okay. So melancholia is a depressing movie about a comet coming and destroying the earth. Hmm. Right. So this is that meets idiocracy. Uh, it is frustratingly familiar if you would all follow like the climate crisis and sure COVID and just people's general willful ignorance. Um, it was, it was very pessimistic, but also pretty funny. I thought. Fair enough. So I'd recommend both of them. Don't look up in the matrix. Cool. Cool. Frank, any, any recommendations on stuff that you've been paying attention to lately and 
new or old media? Oh, we lost his audio. <laughs> okay, I don't fair know what enough. he did. Yeah, I, I muted myself. That's why. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, my wife and I just uh, finished Witcher season two. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, been a big fan of the games and I, I played Witcher one and Witcher two. And then when Witcher three was in development, I was like, I'm going to read all the books. And then I did. And um, Witcher three, once you've read, like you can totally play Witcher three and, and, and enjoy it very much um, without having read any of the books or even ha having played either of the previous two games. But if you've read the books, like, in the Witcher three, you constantly you're like, oh, I I know I know what they're talking about. I know I like I, I remember that chapter. Like it, it's just like a very like a oh, the, 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 it was it was just like a very it was it was like a love story that was like people like the whole world was it felt like a very faithful continuation and recreation of that um of that entire world and that plot. And it was great. Over the season two of Netflix, I I'm enjoying it. But I've had to come to accept it is just a different thing. It is just it is sure, very sure. different. I'm like when Triss meets Siri, I'm like, yay, this is a great point in the book because they become like they they have a really great relationship with like big sister, little sister kind of dynamic, and it's just not there. And um and in the uh in the Netflix series, uh fire magic is like, ooh, fire magic is dangerous, forbidden. In the books, Triss is a fire mage. She's a fire mage. She's been a fire mage huh. always. Like that's like fire is not like this sure. forbidden thing. Fire magic is is everywhere. So they're just making like constant changes here and there. And it's like, okay, these guys have all the same names, but they are doing very different things and for sometimes muddled reasons. So I'm interested to see how it goes. Mostly it's like I just really love the universe and as adaptations go it seems like pretty well done mm -hmm. like there was an animated witcher movie that was just like i i watch it and i really wanted it to be good it had um some of the um voice acting and some of the animation um artists uh behind the castlevania next netflix series and oh, gotcha, series gotcha. and okay. castlevania castlevania netflix is just fucking awesome it's incredible incredible start to finish amazing and and with that kind of pedigree i was really looking forward to it and i came out of that being like this is not this was this was like written this script was written by someone who like skimmed over a witcher wikipedia and it, it would it would be like reading a like a lord of the rings like watching a lord of the rings movie and the twist at the end is gandalf actually like was best friends with sauron and helped him rise to power and you're like that's that's not that's not what happened what no and so I'll, 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 my wife and i will keep it up but mostly out of love of the universe um sure. we just kind of have to except sure. that it's it's different it's different <laughs> oh and uh and i also uh finished uh i like it's been on my two playlist forever um but i played system shock 2 um oh. which was which is a very old game yes, i was it is. very scared i was very scared of it as a wee lad um, really I, I, like I was just a little like I I was young enough that like guys with worms in their heads, um, you know, and playing in like spooky space labs and stuff was like just very unnerving. Sure. I was very sensitive back then. Um, it was like it was really good, and then just uh, just like last week, an article came out about Ken Levine, and that was like very very interesting. System Shock Two was developed in a year and a half. That's so fast. Bonkers. That's Bonkers so fast. fast. And yeah. and. And but you also can see in level design. If you play it now, you're like, yeah, this is this this level is just like completely confusing. I have a dual screen setup, so I had the System Shock here, and I had a wiki over here. Just be like, I don't know, I don't have the time or patience. Sure, sure. To like figure out where I need to go. I'm I want the experience, the guided like, tour. Take me through. Right, right, and the, and like and that's that's fine, right? And that's that's fine, especially because like they did a good game that that was like it was it was complete. And they did that again for Bioshock, but Bioshock, uh, you know, took away a bit longer. And then uh, they spent forever in Bioshock Infinite. And th uh, I was just like reading this article that came out on Bloomberg. Their get the Ken Levine's uh, next game. He's the he's one of the main designers on System Shock Two. That was the game that get, gave him his uh, his fame. Uh, it's been in development for eight years, and they don't have anything to show for it. I'm like, wow. Some for I feel like for the creative process crazy success can really be the worst thing that happens to sure someone. well i mean sure. it's like, second system like, second system syndrome right you gotta do it right or this is like third or fourth system but you're like i gotta right really make it work yeah yeah 
Right. Well, and, and, well, and it's also the the fact that um, people who create things well and managing people and projects are completely different skill sets. Yeah. And once yeah, you true. make one person in charge of everything, like I feel like so frequently, you're you're just asking asking for, for asking disaster. For trouble, like yeah. there are. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, no, like original creator's vision must like always be respective. <laughs> and to that, I always say, so you love Jar Jar Binks? Is that is that is that what you're saying? Do you yep. love the prequels? And it's like, you know, it's uh, sometimes the most important thing for a creator is an is an editor. And for George Lucas, that was his wife who said, no, this is, <laughs> this is dumb and confusing. Hideo Kojima. Nah, it doesn't have an editor. Doesn't even know if you ask the Hideo Kojima like what's happening in like in store in like what's happening at this point in Metal Gear Solid. I bet if you held a gun to Kojima's head and, and asked him to explain a plot at a given given chapter, he would not be able to tell you. And he's admitted as, as such. So like, Funny. yeah. Anyway, my rant is over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I have I have one recommendation. I'll make it brief though, uh, oh, yeah. because I'm working on Jovian Wars. Uh, I've decided to go back and watch a bunch of Gundam content. Ooh. Oh, sure. Uh, yes. So I recently treated myself to the visual spectacle that is uh, Mobile Suit Gun- Gundam Thunderbolt December Sky. So after that word salad, uh, <laughs> it is it is fantastic. It is not a feel-good anime. You will not feel good after you watch it. It is definitely... A lot... hmm? uh, John, have you seen that meme that's like... The person looking at the gun, though, oh, giant robot, and then uh, robots are cool, and then the gun is shooting a laser that says war is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 100%. It's 100%. Like, this is like Gundam's central theme has always been war is terrible. Uh, and war, this is... war is really bad with a sprinkling of um, very horny uh, teenagers are determining. Well, I mean, it's like, an anime, right? That's part of that's part yeah, of the right, that's the right. medium. This is funny. Like right, you, yes. yeah, but like it, you, it, it is very much like war is very bad. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, these funny. are these are crimes. Uh, <laughs> but it, it just like relentlessly you pun- relentlessly punches you in the face with that concept, uh, like in a in a not dumbed down and like tongue in cheek way. It's like no, this is terrible. Uh, and they they did a really great job of like there's a bunch of um, without spoiling the plot. Uh, there there are some scenes in which people in space spacesuits shoot at other people in spacesuits. And you cannot tell who's on which side because the a the action is going by really quickly, but b they also intentionally chose to make the spacesuits of both factions kind of look the same. Yeah, interesting. Right, right. So it's like, oh, just humans murdering each other. That's what this, it is. This is bad. There's just people dying, and yeah. and the whole time is like, why are you doing this? I don't know. And the jazz is great too. There's a bunch of jazz. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's I guess it for our, our media recommendations. <laughs> and then jazz. And then jazz. Uh, but yeah, I guess right, it's well, time for cool. our our uh, mythic games sponsorship. Yeah. Y- yes, give a prize from Mythic Games. So every week, Ruben finds one of our lucky listeners with a ten with ten dollars in credits to moe-games.com. All you have to do to participate is hang out with us and chat and say the magic word that Frank remembers that we picked from before the episode when it started. Oh no! What's the word? Uh, um, because I, the my favorite things about uh, appearing on these episodes is I get to multitask. I get to talk with you, fine gentlemen, and I paint at the same time. So the word today is brush. Oh, no, that's Jesus. not the word. It's fine. John. It's fine. No! I can type. I can type brush. Give me a second to type it. You already did it. I I was I was my brain was I did elsewhere. It. I did it. I typed it. I'm in. So Everything's fine. I typed it incorrectly. Okay, type in the word brush. It was not the word utopia that we discussed previously. Oh, no, because I was not part of that discussion. I was very confused. I just went. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. goodness gracious. That was perfect. <laughs> Does, is, it, is it better? Is it better that I am, in fact, painting a utopia in Kidu? Ooh, there we go. What kind? Uh, he, I, I, um, Taro Kawagoe uh, sculpted some little ECM bitlets. So oh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a Ricky uh, ECM little dude. Very Excellent. nice. All right. I'm hitting the button. You've got, you've got to hit the, the button. Bunch is happening. Three, two, one, go. Congratulations to Traxor. $10 to Hooray. make the games. We will, we will get in touch with you and tell Ruben, and you'll get your, your 10%, or $10 discount code thing. 
Hooray! Congratulations. Well, excellent. All right. It's time for our main feature. So tonight we're here to talk about uh, Heavy Gear Utopia. So Utopia is a pretty cool, probably one of the more unique factions, if not the most unique faction, now that I think about it, uh, in Heavy Gear. They were once a beautiful and wealthy planet that was incredibly self-sufficient, um, part of the, the, the Earth Empire, uh, and then Earth withdrew. They're like, peace. You know, at the same time, they left with like, you know, they left Terra Nova and all their other colonies, uh, abandoning them. And when that happened, there was a a power vacuum, you know, clearly, right? Uh, you know, the, the, the government just left. And that power vacuum led to a nuclear holocaust. Yay. So <laughs> it was Utopia. It was named appropriately at the time. Um and now the surface of Utopia is basically a radioactive wasteland, making it more of a uh, ironic moniker. So the survivors fled underground into what they call deep cities, uh, which I kind of imagine are basically like nerve out of oh, Evangelion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Upside down skyscrapers. Um, yep. And only uh, basically through warring, only three uh, factions remained. It was the Steel Gate, which is the super militaristic and aggressive, Cogland, which is the uh, industrial powerhouse, um, and Greenway, which is kind of a religious fanatics who wants to like recolonize the surface mm. or see it restored. Um, CEF came back and they're like, cool, Steel Gate, you guys have all the military, we're your friends. Um, we're everybody's Cogland. friends. Yeah, right. Cogland, you have all the industry, cool. Um, and we're not going to bother trying to make a truce with Greenway because we have the we have the military and industry in our backs, um, and they went and resubjugated the planet. Enlightened, uh, re-enlightened, so, re-enlightened the planet. There you go. Making, making sure I don't know, we guys, have the kinda, uh, terminology correct. Kind of sounds like a, a a dick move to me. Yeah, they usually are. Right. Yeah. So um, <laughs> most of the planet is loyal to uh, to CEF. Though there are some people that are a little bit bent out, uh, probably bent out of shape about being left out of the uh, original deal. So, um, Utopia uses a couple unique words that we'll talk about tonight. So, armagers, which is basically their word for gear. Yeah. It is a gear in every way. Um, we have uh, Enkidu, which is N K I D U, or drones or auto drones, which are uh, near artificial intelligence or NAI-powered uh, drones. So they're pretty weird because, like, your army is going to be you know, your gears and uh, basically a bunch of remote control cars for them uh, <laughs> to, yeah. to, to attack the enemy with. A swarm of angry toasters. Yes, as they're, as they're often uh, lovingly re- referred to as toasters. Um, the, uh, the army gears are... They're good. They're very good, but they do feel pricey for what you get so if you're like yeah looking at these stats these armors go I'm, I'm gonna build a force made out of armagers and it'll be compared to like you know a force of mambas and jaegers you're gonna run out of points immediately and you're probably gonna get thrashed like there well, is a very... yeah they're all the the low teens so they're yes. all they're all costing as many points as a cobra right but without the react plus the native react yeah plus that the cobra yeah. has and with far fewer uh weapon loadouts yeah so i mean here's right. here's so, the here's the bog standard commando armor gear, right oh sure yep uh yes. um, it's 14 which, points. which is weird to call the which is to call them bog standard because they're not they're, they're like elite they're like sure. amongst the armor gear they're they're like weirdly elite in their in their way they are yeah. freaking fast Yes. Um, I think that data card is is that data card out of date? I think I thought they were um hover move uh ten. This is the uh, September twenty twenty one one. So it's it's possible the, I, the, you can. We, well, I've I've got it. Oh the, no no, it, it's the, the VTOL. The VTOLs are are ten. They yeah. are faster. Yeah. But anyways, um, so <laughs> at a glance, you're gonna have these fairly elite armagers, armagers, um, and then. Very not elite, cheap, disposable, nearly uh, dr- or Enkidu floating around them. Right. Um, they have a lot of inex- good, inexpensive units. 
uh, between those drones and the uh, the men at arms, the apes. Um, they have a handful, you know, a good handful of unique rules that we'll touch on. They have basically no vehicles. Nothing that you traditionally call a vehicle other than the Gilgamesh, which is the biggest, most expensive tank in the game. I believe it costs more than the uh, HH2. Mm-hmm. Well, you can fig- configure it to be anyway, I think, right? Yeah. It is um, they don't have a lot of AP, but they are actually pretty good shots all around. And they, yeah. have, they they have some weird sources like the uh, the um the commando NQ2s like natively come with uh, heavy uh, anti vehicle missiles, so there there's there's AP there, but like it's like AP one, you yeah, know, yeah. A, a, it's like very ready um, availability of like AP one maybe AP two on like cheap platforms, but you're not gonna have like a rail gun or anything like that, or a tank yeah. gun or anything. No yeah. rail guns, field guns. I mean, tank but you guns. do get access to anti-tank missiles pretty readily if you really want them. So it's not like you can't yes. get it. Yes. Just, it's just on a particular platform, and it's not like it just like yeah. falls you out. Have to, you, have to, yeah. you have to go get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. like North, where you're like, I clicked on a thing, it has an anti-tank missile. Hooray! Yeah, right. Like, uh, or, or like, I, I got a free snub cannon. Whatever, I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nope, it's different. Um. So the cool thing about Utopia, well, one of the cool things is that they're actually a pretty small number of units. So I don't think it's bad. We could even like, we could even go through each one of them fairly quickly. Sure. Um, yeah, they've got three armagers and three uh, types of Enkidu, plus the Mar DK, the Apes, and the Gilgamesh. So not a whole lot. Um, so let's start with the uh, the Commando, which John had up. There's only a, a couple options here, but basically. They're fast. Yep. They're, are, they're walk hover eight. That that can scoot. That can get you around the table really quick. Yep. It's um, very, it, with native jetpack six. Yes. Yeah, with native pretty, jetpack pretty six. Hard. So you want to get on top of something, you can get up there. Yeah, and you can basically clear any terrain you might want to clear. Uh, the most annoying thing, though, is that they're agile piloting three with stealth. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, it's yeah, really they're, they're, that is a great combination. Yep. Like they're they're all of the rules to keep them alive. It's even harder to kill than a jaguar because of that stealth. Mm-hmm. Or ja- yeah, it's they're really fun. Um, so equipment wise, though, like standard uh, commando armor, all of them are going to come with a medium rocket pack, a mm-hmm. medium hand grenade, which is deceptively good. Yes. Um, an LAPGL, and then basically your choice of a uh, rotary. Yeah, the rotary laser, medium rotary laser. Medium grenade launcher or medium laser cannon. All are excellent. Yeah, like none of those is really a bad choice. Um, I'm fond of the rotary laser and the laser cannon personally. Sure. Um, it's just so fast. It can deliver. But yeah, it's so fast, though, it can deliver both the rotary laser and that grenade launcher really efficiently. Yeah. And with the, the changes the, to, the... to grenade launchers now that they're burst one. That's pretty rad too. Yes. Yeah. And with um, yeah, with those changes to grenade, and so blast, blast only affects um indirect shots. However, uh, as you'll see with all the armagers, the armagers are uh, ripe for vet upgrades and selecting one as a duelist. Mm-hmm. Um, barcode, who is supposed to be on the episode previously, uh, we tend to go a little late, and he is working, sure. adult life things to do. Um, but he concocted a duelist. Uh, Grenadier Commando Armager build that goes um, that goes uh, linked medium grenade launchers Oof. and so if you so you have you have two based mm-hmm. bur, uh, plus one for burst plus one for linked um, yep. if you do if you do let them so you're at four you do let them have it on five mm-hmm. but then if you do if you do blast you're indirect back to four and then you're three on secondaries Yeesh. four. Four on GU three plus, and then three on GU three plus for secondaries mm-hmm. on an area of effect three. Like that's so good. Yeah. That's so, like yeah. you do not want to be. That can clear some room. That. Yeah, it's the, like even if you're doing infantry spam. Like okay, this round I'll do all of you infantry. I'm the great. You're negating sure. your infantry uh, dice uh, dice cover bonus. I'll do all you two two damage uh, this round, and I'll do I'll, I just cleared four or five uh, you know squads of infantry in two turns. Fine, it's fine, it's great. Yeah, 
well, it'll take Brutal. three turns for most infantry. Uh, well, okay, so yeah. I mean, really, so Ooh. so really, what this turns out to be is because you know there's infantry that are like two one or whatever or, instead of three three. Right, right. So if you have a squad versus right. a team, really, what what if you start spamming the the uh, grenadier armager with these with the duelist upgrades that Frank is talking about, you're encouraging your opponent in future games to take the the squad upgrade or <laughs> right. That's yeah. that's basically what it right. is, right? Right. So, you're forcing them uh, how, to take a how, bigger if, thing. If you're, right. But if you, even if they take the squad upgrade, two attacks with that, and if you cripple it, infantry are already slow. Now they can't top speed. Right. Now yeah, the, right. you know, the best thing that infantry are, are doing are contesting objectives makes it even that less likely that they're going to be able to do that. Yeah, and if you pull them away yeah. from their objective, that makes it that much harder. Speaking of somebody who plays a lot of infantry, right. sometimes I tend to be pretty aggressive with them. I get them out of position, and then Adam cripples it, and then I'm just like, well, no. poo. Can't get it back into position. Yeah, right. I'm screwed. That, not not being able to top speed is like really something you have to constantly think about. It can yeah, really it is. It is. It is super terrible. You're just like no. So that's game losing so or game tying wise, right there. Yeah. yeah. Upgrades wise on this guy, you can swap its medium rocket pack for a light anti tank missile. Sure. Which is fantastic. Good. Yep. Um, yep. And you can upgrade them to VTOL, mm -hmm. which also puts them up to walk over ten. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the VTOL, I don't, I don't know how often I would hover with a VTOL. Uh, <laughs> so VTOL so we'll, with the we'll VTOL. It. Yeah. It was, so we'll 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 go over it when we talk about games. I did it, and it was very brief. But oh my god, it was amazing. Right. <laughs> it was it was like, well, you're elevated, and I have anti air, and I was like, well, I'm rolling this many dice because I um. <laughs> We'll, we'll talk about this in the, uh, soon, but order of operations is very, very important with Utopia. Yeah. If you're going to go elevated, you want to send your ECM bubble generator first. Um, and then, because yeah. then when you go elevated next to him, he's still providing that ECM mm -hmm. bonus. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. you do so, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're getting so many defense dice on a PI, PI three agile. It's like, try and hit me and even if you do even if i like i'm really scared i can just uh you know take my make my, make my um ecm and key to uh take the shot for me yeah so it's a it's a it's a commando right like they're 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 gonna be powerful like we've been talking about though like you want to start stacking upgrades on them right away right because that that light anti-tank missile is no joke the movement 10 be able to move 20 inches and throw a damage nine grenade into something That's your I accidentally got a break the line point. I was like, oh, I was here last turn. Yeah, that scored me a break the line point that yeah. last, last turn. I, did, I didn't even know. I wasn't even trying. Gross. Right. Like in, in a game where you're only going to get to move four times per game, the amount of reach that a 10 inch move gets you is bananas. Mm -hmm. and, and if you get haywired or crippled, you're like, oh, no, I can only go 10 inches. I can still yeah, right? get in your I can still get into your back arc and shoot you in optimal range bed with my rotary laser like five. Yeah. So commanders are cool. Um, then there's also the commando and Kidu, which is their little buddy. Yeah. And they are similarly fast. They are also agile. So they're piloting four up instead of three up agile. Yeah. They're, it's funny, so the, the uh, heavy anti-vehicle missile, the HAVM, and to me, it's basically the same thing as the LRP, except it's guided. That might come in once in a while. So, so here's, kind of here's the that. trick, right? As, as somebody who plays a lot of flails, um, because these things are so mobile, you can generally force a rear arc bonus regardless of where you are on the table. And the reason I say that is because if you're in the midfield, so let's say your target's in the midfield, you are also in the midfield. As long as you get something, your your target, your observer behind the model, you get forward observation, right? And and uh, so you get a rear arc bonus because your forward observer is behind the model, right? Conversely, if the model is facing your forward observer and you are directly opposite, it, your your uh, anti vehicle missile guy is directly opposite, then you also have back arc. Yeah. So all no, of those things are are good. It's they're su surprisingly good little units. Um, yeah. And then there's so there's the LRP and uh, HAVM is the standard one, right? Mm -hmm. But you can also take one with ECM, which is a very cheap way to get ECM protection up on anywhere you want on the table, mm -hmm. right? You can move that thing 16 inches and put that bubble wherever you want. Um, it's 
it's a good little guy, but it is it does cost as much as a hunter. It's not as tough. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's comparable. Armor. It is it is definitely worse than a hunter in terms of survivability. Yeah. Right. But yeah, you're, it does have you're, agile. You're, 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 you're paying, and stealth. You're you're paying a premium. There's like a synergy premium here that you're paying. You're paying for the ECM commando NQ specifically to pair with other units to give them that ECM bonus or to give that opportunity to hack. It's like a little overcosted um, on its own, I think. But it, its utility becomes so much more apparent when you start like you know pairing it with other guys. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, is everyone there? Yeah, it's all oh, good. Don't okay. worry about it. Uh, Adam, Did we Adam lose is Adam? having no. He's he's still there. He just had some uh, camera problems. Yeah, but I I think okay. he's 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 messaging me now. He's 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 working on it. Um, but uh, mm. yeah, I think I think uh, it's it's very affordable, right? For what it does, mm. it does yeah, have yeah, it does absolutely. have conscript. Uh, but the the I think the key problem with things that have conscript is that you need to be very careful about what they're positional relationship is with their combat group leader and this thing moves as fast has all the same skills in terms of movement and also a jetpack six so if you need it to be somewhere uh within within uh, concurrency or, or in formation so to speak uh you're good so that's pretty and rad. Uh, i i suppose we really should talk about like arguably the most important uh unique uh uh terminology for utopia and that's the decoy rule yes. right so uh so decoy says that um and it's it, it doesn't even have to be same combat group any friendly enkidu if your opponent says i want to attack your armature you can say uh this enkidu within three inches of the ar of the armature um it has to, it specifically has to be an armature model mm -hmm. um yeah. you can say this 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 enkidu is going to take that attack instead and this applies to um like blast or trick yep. shot uh trick shot stuff as well so if you yeah. have a blast template that's covering both of them you're gonna be like okay this nq model is gonna eat both of them um and they 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 they're just i i, I guess they're imagining that the uh nq is um you know suicidally diving in front of the fire or whatever to protect protect the armature right so i will say yeah, we'll that, that sure yeah it's a big rule um this is one of the problems facing utopia Right. Oftentimes people are like, mm -hmm. oh, this is they're so broken because I, this is the way I felt when I first faced them. I was like, man, they're they're so broken because I can't get through this agile, you know, pouting three or four up thing to to take it out. Mm -hmm. I think at the time you were using um, a BF-225, which is agile piloting three up with a shield. And I was like, I cannot kill yeah. this. Right. I can't I can't do anything to scratch your armature. And I was doing things like firing anti-vehicle missiles at it or a laser cannon. And I was like maybe hitting the bf225 maybe but like not really doing much damage because of all the defensive buffs uh and i you know i did a lot of um belly aching on some of the discords and and uh people talk me through it uh but basically the idea is that you want to do things like do trick shot you want to do things like hit it with a, a grenade or a blast or a rocket pack or something like that and the reason why is because if you if you roll twice on the same model you're that much more likely to damage it so you still have to chew yeah. through it. You're not getting you like you're not stripping the Utopia player of the of the benefit of this rule, but you are more efficiently with a single activation stacking more damage potentially onto this defensive um yep. shield model, right? The uh, the um, ablative wound so to speak. So that's that's right. one way and to to attack this problem head on. Uh if you want a more even more this direct game where you way. Typically... Hmm? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you don't typically one shot things in this game, anyways. Yeah, right? exactly. So be able to right. deliver two hits on on the disposable bodyguard, right. which we'll talk about that that decoy rule when we get down to the the army special yeah. rules. Um, it's a big deal. And then of course the 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 last one, really quick for the uh, the commando NKD though is they have a EMT version, which it only has the LAVM or the HAVM. But it can repair. Yeah, that guy's so an annoying. Like... I hate everything about that guy. <laughs> you, you, Adam, you've got to use him. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've used him against John. Just oh, keeps, he just keeps. Like, I keep plinking like a point off the armature, and he's like, "No, no, you didn't." <laughs> like, why? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. No. If you want to talk about like hilarious combat groups for later on, yeah. doing like OUF with a vulture with two of these things repairing it. 
Oh my God. Yes. Please. Let's talk about that. Like I've been, <laughs> I've, I've been looking at black talent models for a long time and I don't want to get heavy into black talent, models, but OUF where I can like have a bunch of my painted utopia dudes and then like two black talent models. Sweet. Yes. That's it. No, I'm in. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. No. So this little guy for, for six points, being able to repair things is, is a bigger deal than I thought. And I really learned it in that game that you and I played John, mm -hmm. um, where, yeah, you finally get through my decoys and you're starting to put damage on the you know, on the armagers or, you know, you you got that decoy down to one structure and suddenly it's back up to two or three. Yeah. And you're, just like, right? you're just like, why? why? And um, I, I talked to I could this is confirmed by Rooster. So unless he's changed his mind, if you repair, if if you have a three, three model and it has two health left, it's crippled. Right? Oh, sorry. Let's say it has uh, three health left. So it's crippled, right? If you repair it, you actually also remove it out of the crippled yeah, state. Yeah, you're uncrippled. Yeah, so it's uh, so it's uncrippled. It's not like crippled is like a irremovable state. Boo. You just get your health back up, and then it's and then it's back, yeah. which is which is which is just fantastic. For so the, the utopia player, they're fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. They're fast and they're mean. I think me personally, the uh, the commando and kiddos that I look at are obviously the EMT and the ECM. And yeah. then just stock, you know, I don't put a lot of points in upgrading them. I, I believe they can upgrade. Yeah, they can upgrade their light rocket pack to medium rocket pack. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to shave points in this army. Yeah. So I try to keep them cheap. Um, the the second type of armager or the second category, I guess, both armager and uh, in Kidu are going to be the Riki. I believe is the, the correct way to say it. Riki. Um, so you've got the Riki Armager and the Riki uh, and Kidu. So the Armager is going to have stats that look really similar to the uh, to the Commando. One of the ways that they're similar that that I totally forgot about is that they're it, they're also uh, walk cover eight. Mm -hmm. well, they're still fast. So just as fast as a Commando that doesn't have the VTOL upgrade. Um, they are similarly armor seven and agile, but. They picked up a 4-2 hull structure and ECM plus. It's, and I think it's the only e native ECM plus in the faction, which is a big deal. Yeah. Um, they're, yeah, so they're agile ECM plus ECCM, which actually makes them pretty good CGLs. Yes. Fantastic uh, CGLs. 24-inch sensors, because sure, uh, stealth and comms. So weapons yeah, the wise, fact that the everything has yeah. has stealth is just such a royal pain in the butt because you have to get close to deal anything, and then by the time you're close enough, you probably don't have stealth, or at least not all your stuff has stealth, and then they're in range of you, and they're hacking you as you're coming in. And you're just like, ah, oh, this is such a slog. It's it's ugly. Yep. So they're a little bit lighter on the firepower, so they have an LLC compared to the you know the medium laser cannon that the commando gets. Um, they also have a medium rotary laser variant, though, so just just in case. But uh, oh, and then also they have the LLC with a light anti tank missile. So yep. you can't get the rotary laser with the anti tank missile, which makes me a little bit sad. But I guess you have to make some decisions. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. You can't have it all. <laughs> yeah, per personally, I I lean towards the LLC LATM. You lose the GP role and go to fire support, but. I'm probably throwing these guys on recons or special ops anyhow. Yeah. It's a really good unit. I've there, used, also used these against you. I, I if if you if you made a Utopia list and you didn't have at least one Rika Armager, I'd be like, Inter interesting, interesting choice. Like, I, I would it would definitely raise my eyebrows. That was a conscious choice you made. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I I think really what they're for, in addition to just being jerks, is for objective grabbing. If you're doing a hold sort of situation, if you need to physically be somewhere and yeah, remain there yeah. for the game, because if you surround them with enough ablative wounds, they're also granting EC, uh, ECM to those ablative wounds, uh, and those things are probably yep. agile. Um, so it's just it's just a pain giant pain in the butt because they're 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 going to be two base uh, plus cover plus ECM right. And they're just going to be stuck. So, there. so I view them as um, they're very much a toolbox unit. Like they're they're decent shooters, especially with uh, precise and advanced on that LLC. Like that's that's real good. Yeah. Um. That that'll 
like you know it's not going to necessarily threaten um like a, a strider but like it'll put hurt on uh, on a lot yeah. of things uh but like native ecm the combination of stealth their pretty good sensor range it means that um like almost every turn that their action is going to be spent doing something with good utility like just hacking something um uh, uh, hacking something or shooting, or I've even um, spent that action throwing smoke because what they're going to be doing yeah. is they're going to be leading troops in their ECM bubble mm. up the field, and they're going to be like leading like a, a little phalanx of douchebags. And because they're providing that ECM uh, bubble <laughs> yeah. around them, he's going to be a focal point of people's ire and their attacks. But he's going to be have a lot of little assholes shielding him from said ire so yep, it's yep. like he's he's great if you want to because you're going to push some stuff up the board and once we get into the uh the rika and kidus well i can talk about like some of the real synergy that he brings with his rika and enkidus that also bring it with the with the other stuff in the rest of the army yeah so let's bring in the the rika and kidus right so their their basic unit is an hmg uh for me the unfortunate part of the hmg is that they also have a light frag cannon option and mm -hmm. a light frag cannon option is the the same dice, the same range, the same damage, and AI, you're basically choosing between uh, split and having the option for an AP shot right. with, the, uh, with the frag cannon. So I prefer frag cannons. I think some people really like split, but I don't I don't go out of my way for it. Right. I um, mean, it, it really depends on what you see all the time, right? So if you are, yeah, yeah. if you're looking at uh, an opponent who loves taking a bunch of infantry teams, uh, paratroopers or something, and just spamming them across the middle of the table and forcing you to chew through all of those uh, sure. bases, right, with activations, then split is is important. So the, it, the option exists, uh, but I, I tend to agree with you. In most cases, the frag cannon is probably the correct one. Yeah, right. But so for four points, you get so much on this platform, right? Yeah. So like, it's it's... So one inch tall gear, it moves six, so it's nothing special there. Gunnery five up, piloting four up. It's yeah. like it's like describing a Quang Shi. Like it's kind of yeah. dog shit, but it's also amazing for the dog shit that you get. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what you're really getting with that four points is a stealth target designator. Yeah. Yes. Them all. I think they all have native target designators, which is fantastic. And that target yeah. designator, that's what that's what synergizes with all those. Um, anti-vehicle missiles and the commando uh, commando armagers and the commando and yep. um, the, the support stuff all has um, guided weapons as well including mortars like you have just a a threat of uh if you if you don't address this one of these guys could just run up 12 inches and target designate you in the butt and then anything across the board can just hammer you with pie plates or indirect attacks i mean really this is what they're all about right so so you want to have right. yes. uh, a bunch of I guess slightly below average activations, but you have more activations, so that brings you back towards statistical average, right? right. Yeah, right. Uh, and then because you have all the survivability, because everything is agile, and you have the, the blade of wound thing where they can just jump in the way of shots against the the commanding officer armager, or the combat group leader armager rather, um, things will stick around. Uh, and like I said, yeah. was saying before, you know, you you just need to um, be opposite the the your forward observer uh relative to the target and then you'll always have a back arc bonus yeah so that's really annoying it's it's pretty gross and then you know so the, that stealth td basically means unless the enemy has uh 36 inch sensors they can't jam you in response to being target designated yep if he's, if he's standing close to your Riki, he's going to pick up his ECCM bonus. Yep. And sure, he's only EW5 up, but he's rolling three dice. Yep. And if it fails, whatever, you spent four points on it. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. let it eat an anti-tank missile, you know, for your I for mean, your it's going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, the, the Riki and Kidu are probably by far the most obnoxious. Um, and the king of the king of obnoxious... Uh, Riki and Kidu, though, is going to be the ECM. Oh, version. yes. We, lo we lose T. This is the one where we lose TD. Yep. We get both ECM and, very critically, ECCM yep. on, a, on a four point model. So, one of the best ways to bring down an ECM protect bubble is like, well, fuck you. I've got a 
EW uh, uh, EW specialist. I'm just going to out hack you. And then you just be like, oh, I'm just going to run firewall. And congratulations. You've hacked my four point model. You spent your, I don't know, like eight, 18 point activation to hack, not my Rika armager, but a four point model. Do you feel good <laughs> right. about that? <laughs> yeah. Who, who, after you've frustratingly hacked them and shut them down, they can still just take shots for the, for the leader anyways. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, and, and it's a four point ECM platform. Like, even if this, these guys don't shoot anything at all, like, oh, you have you have an HHT-90. I'm just going to hack you. I'm going to hack you yeah. with this four-point model, and you're just going to hate it. It's like Peace River on steroids. Peace River is like everything has everything has ECM. It's like, well, we don't have ECM on everything, but we do have ECM on four-point models to make you really irritated at them. Yeah, and this yeah. is the, the, yeah. these all because of the ECCM, ECCM, they can also uh, jump in front of the hacking too, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. When people are trying to hack your mm -hmm. Eureka Armager to shut down your ECM plus. Yep, exactly. Yep. And that heavy infantry laser is no joke either. It's uh, it's not bad. That will happily bad. shred any AR five gear. Yeah, yeah. And so, so it's it's an HMG, but it, you're swapping one of the burst for a guaranteed advanced. hit. Effectively, which is worth it. Yeah, and and so all these weapons are silent. I haven't yet taken a hide action because uh, a lot of it just hasn't needed. I just haven't need to because of um the uh the the matchups I've been facing. But if you take a hide action, um you know as long as you don't move more than two inches, you can settle these guys on an objective, and you can break. You can uh not break your hide. By just shooting silent or just hacking, and um, and yep. you know you get you get those free rerolls, like <laughs> even I mean, more I mean, rerolls. Yes, to... yes, but I mean, like I, I don't know if that's matchup way. dependent, right? Like, how often are you really going to declare that hide action? Uh, sure, sure. It, well, I, I think it's it's. Ma it's I don't need to put based. ECM protect up. I'm going to take hide. <laughs> There's <laughs> always something. Yeah, sure, but it, I think it's also it, it's like it's an option, and it's also like as yes. we're developing scenarios and missions, you know, like it's it's something to be mindful of. Who knows? Maybe maybe it'll come up. Yeah, I mean, there there's definitely somebody out there who's going to be like, aha, I'm going to take the hide yeah. action. It, you know, at four points, it really doesn't feel like you're paying an extra point for hide. No, for absolutely stealth. not. It's like no. okay, it's it's just there as a freebie. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like the the fries at the bottom of the McDonald's bag. You're like, oh, okay, I'll eat yeah. these. Yeah, that is right, that is right. an excellent, excellent <laughs> analogy. <laughs> oh, and Kidu down here. What do you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so the last of the armor, the last of the the armager and Kidu duos is the support armager, and it looks unlike its brothers. It has like a weird, large, treaded, armored lower body mm -hmm. uh it's it's a little lower to the ground but it's it's kind of chonky it's a little surprising um it's up there with with a cobra in terms of resilience so piloting five up not great armor eight and whole structure five one five, five is one is, is a significant it's really hard to cripple that thing yeah 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 and you know, gun wise, it has a heavy rotary cannon, which certainly nobody on this show likes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those things are stupid. <laughs> all of them have heavy rotary cannons. You cannot take a support armature with that one, which is fine because if they had a different option, I wouldn't take it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. HRC is freaking rad. Then the uh, a medium guided mortar or a medium anti tank missile. Both are excellent. Like, what a big beefy gun! Oh, and then a medium rocket pack for giggles. Yep. They have. You can you can hide this guy, and you know you can depending on what sublist you're in, you can either have uh, those four point TD Rikas in the same group, or just have them in a different combat group. You have to plan out your uh, combat group activations a little bit, but like yeah, you have plenty of cheap TD to get you know guided and TD off. Yeah, and medium anti tank missiles are really no joke. Yeah, they, like, they light, will the F you missiles up. mess things up, but medium. And actually, what I really like, I kind of lean towards the medium guided mortar. They've got two two reasons for it. One, because blast with damage eight. Mm -hmm. Unless you're armor nine, yeah. I don't care about AP, right? Right. 
So unless, uh, yeah, it's or armor eight or greater. So if you're most gears in the game, ignoring your cover dice yeah. is going to be a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the oh, the one with the medium guided mortar is GP. It's general purpose. Why not? That's hilarious. But, yeah, the the media, the anti tank missile one goes to fire support only, but being able to take this guy in a GP squad. Yeah, is pretty cool. It's like that, no, uh, but... like the big robot from Terminator Two, right? It just sort of sits there and shoots lasers and stuff, and it's just angry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and you know, GP in um, in Utopia is a little bit weird because it doesn't include. I don't think it includes any of. No, it only includes the EMT and Kidu that we talked about earlier. Mm. Um, otherwise, it's the stock versions of the Armagers. Um, and the apes. But the um, apes are great, though. Yeah, apes are fantastic. Let's let's dig into those a little bit. So these models are hilarious. I love the models. They're if you if you look at the scale, they're basically how big an infinity tag would be. Yeah, there they are. Oh, there it is. So again, for seven points. So we're talking a point more than a hunter. A base. Yeah, base hunter, mm-hmm. which maybe maybe you think, well, like a hunter has all these weapons. So so talk to me, Adam, as if I'm a, a sneering doubter. Like, tell me why apes are so good. These guys don't have like snub cannons or anything great like that. They're like they move just fine. But why are they a point or two or even three points more than a hunter? <laughs> Jetpack eight. <laughs> <laughs> so they move. Uh, potentially 16 inches in a turn. Yeah, vertically and too, and if you need them to. What was that? They can go yeah, vertically. vertically. Yep. Um, even without the jetpack, they're moving seven. Mm-hmm. So they're ludicrously fast. They have the same armor as Hunter. So that little thing, uh, and it's it's one lower home structure, yep. right? So yep. that, that little thing is basically as tough as a Hunter, and it's fast as a Jaguar. Faster when you jetpack. Yep. Mm-hmm. As long as you're going in straight lines. Yep. It's really fast. Um, and and React rocket pods, handheld yep. React rocket packs. That's awesome. That's yeah. so good. That's really fun. They can react with their LAPGL, which is actually surprisingly cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, nice. Because yeah, it's built in. If you take the version with the uh, with the LSMG, which I like submachine guns. Out to 18 inches, you're still rolling three dice. And within nine inches, you're rolling four dice. So it's a it's a brutal little guy. And, you know, for the soft version is fine for seven points. Um, but there's a node or not. Sorry, not the node. The uh, the Eden wizard for one more point. You slap a auxiliary ECM and ECCM on there. Worth it. <laughs> exactly. So you can get a lot of cheap uh, ECMs in this army, and they seem to come with ECCMs much of the time. I mean, the most important and part with... about the wizard, though, is you get to lock eyes with your opponent and say, I activate my wizard. My wizard. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you also can readily get um, the loadouts that have airdrop, airdropping these little guys with their jetpack so you can get them like on an inconvenient building. And they're, you know, like I, I've seen people put like big honking heavy units on a building and currently there's no explicit rule that prevents you from deploying a visigoth con on the building top i would look at you funny but i'd be like all right but these guys and you know doing so is like okay i'm gonna get a great perch but this guy he's not moving from here these guys can go on a skyscraper and be like all right whatever i like i'm still like totally mobile i can shoot i can airdrop to get you in good range of my um light rocket packs right from the get-go Hack you like almost from the get get go. They're great, great mobility. Yeah, no, it, they're like they're a surprising little package. Um, yeah, so for another one point upgrade, they become special operations, uh, but also pick up airdrop and stealth. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's fun. Um, I actually kind of like their medium flamethrower unit, <laughs> and it's mostly because they have the ability. Like one of the hard parts of using flamethrowers is being able to actually get, get the flamethrower yeah. to the infantry. Right. 
right? But like they're so damn good if you can get to the infantry, mm-hmm. but usually you can't. So this and right even, here, even not against infantry, even if you have, if, even if the enemy has something super heavily armored, just like getting like potential chip damage off of like I think it's flamethrower. Oh yeah. So three, yeah. like three, three dice to potentially do chip damage. Like that's like, you know, maybe the thing turns around and stomps them next turn, but like, Hey, that's preventing it from doing anything else. No one wants to roll three dice, you know, like potentially taking three damage from an eight point unit. Okay. So, yeah, that would be, uh, uh, I, I want to briefly interrupt and not call attention to the individual of this happened to by naming them, but, uh, sort of share some, some, uh, experience that I, I've had. So, Somebody in the chat, uh, who those of you watching on YouTube can find out, has taken a drink from their paint cup. We've all been there. It sucks. Yeah. In Missouri. <laughs> uh, but I believe I well. have the solution. So uh, oh. we all have been getting takeout in the age of the Rona. Uh, so I imagine at some point you have come across one of these, which is, you know, you go to get a Chinese uh, takeout soup or anything like that, or, or uh, Tom Yum from, from Thai a Thai restaurant and you'll get uh, one of these sure. like sort yeah. of um, plastic takeout containers. Uh, and what I've done is I've taken my exacto and cut a square in the lid. And so, ah. and so ah. what this does is it makes it basically, you have to try to drink from this paint cup. Uh, you, you really have to make a concerted <laughs> effort to do so. Uh, so it sort of prevents you from doing that. And the other nice thing is that when you get very vigorous with your, with your, with your paint, uh, cleaning, um, the the smaller aperture will reduce splashing on your table. So that is just a, a trick that I have learned and have put to put to good use, uh, and has thus far prevented me from drinking any paint water. So, wow! In, insert SpongeBob. The more True. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Truly genius. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled yeah. program. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I, people really undersell these models, and I think because they're so small, people are like, oh, that guy's worthless. But they have advanced CEF tech, so yeah. don't think of this guy as like a small, weedy... I don't think of them as a small, weedy frame. I think of them as like a big flail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Here's, mm-hmm. um, yeah, they can, be, they can be pretty mean. The uh, Yeah, it's that flamethrower can get in range. The grenade launcher... Uh, the light grenade launcher we're gonna iffy on. I just like that light submachine gun. But there's also the the big brothers, the support apes, which are armor seven. Mm-hmm. On this on a similarly sized little dude, armor seven four two. Uh, they're a little bit slower with movement six, but they still have that eight inch jetpack. Yep. So whatever. just jetpack everywhere. It's fine. Yeah. And he he's um, got a rifle loadout. Rifles they they hit. <laughs> Not just a rifle, a medium rifle. <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a hard hitting little dude. You know, yeah. get like seven precise up to thirty six inches. Yeah, you do not want to be hit by that. No. Um, like it's entirely yeah, reasonable then, to just leave them hanging out too. Like you can like actually leave them out. Are they? Is your opponent really going to shoot at this nine point model that really isn't doing much else other than covering a fire lane? Right. Right, like sure, sure. I'll take my reaction on on you to shoot my rifle. Like, go ahead. Yeah. Either either you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna top speed, uh, which will make your shooting against me like that much less effective, mm-hmm. or sure. um, or maybe I you know plank some damage off you. And you can just not well, shoot, super. right? If they top speed right. and they end in view, you'd be like, oh, all right, go take a shot. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. For nine points, though, you can get the support ape with the medium bazooka which Rob has finally released the model for. And now we're talking a model that can move 16 inches and deliver a damage AP3 weapon to your rear arc. Mm, That's scary. <laughs> I love medium bazookas. Like light bazookas for, don't interest me. Point. Medium bazookas though. Yes. That's where it's at. It's, it's, it's very uh, Starbucks methodology. Like light is really like, yeah, but then when you get to medium, you're like, this is, significantly more than my stomach can hold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the apes are really fun and the models are cool and nobody expects them on the table. No. They sneak up behind you and then they're like, excuse me, you have a damage seven gun on that thing that's like smaller than a ferret? And yeah. you're like, yeah, what's the what's the problem? Here's yeah. this damage eight bazooka. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, 
So on the opposite base, end of the spectrum, base, oh. base, base two, let them have it. Three, uh, four. If you get to shoot them in the butt, yep. four dice, hooray! That's what the AP three yeah, right? is for. Yep. So then the the last, I guess, with, other than the Gilgamesh, the last unit they have is going to be the Mar DK, which is their. It's not really their equivalent to a Cobra because that's what the support armature is. It is their equivalent to like the King Cobra, I would say, or the Kodiak. Mm. It's like a weird, like, not Strider. I've you know? always thought like yeah. a, it, it just reminds me of the Naga. Yeah, it, it's it's like the yeah. it's like um like a anal- analogous like it's a Strider, it's an ape Strider, you know, like just a Strider, yeah. just wee, wee package sized. Yeah, actually, a Naga is a, a really good example for them, or a really good right. uh, comparison. Comparison because they're the same cost, mm-hmm. nineteen points, right? Mm-hmm. Um, similar. Nagas are only uh, nineteen points. God damn it! <laughs> yeah. Mind. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. Um, so the the stock one, they all have the particle accelerators. The stock one has linked heavy rocket packs. Then there's the um, linked medium anti-tank missile version. Sorry, Naga, Naga are, is, are, uh, are 21 points, the base Naga. But, uh, it's 19 for the long thing, huh? Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty darn close. Yeah, pretty darn close. I, I feel better. And the Naga is the Naga is tougher. Yes, without a doubt. But um, the the Mardik is still armor eight and five one. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the know, five one sort just, of turns just... into a point of armor practically, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned the the linked uh, rocket packs, and there's they also had linked anti tank. Once you have linked ordnance, it gets really really scary like just j- with with let them have it oh, sorry you don't even need to let them have it because this thing has native stable yeah so, that was the part i was about to get to <laughs> native that... stable. you can move and natively shoot four dice on linked ordnance that's holy crap holy crap yeah so the uh the yeah the linked medium anti-tank missile when it's firing a guided shot right so you're two base plus linked, plus stable, mm-hmm. plus two dice for guided, minus one for indirect. So you're looking at a five dice shot, maybe more if you're uh, in the rear arc. And note, note everyone, that even if you're doing a fire mission, when you are reacting, you are considered at combat speed. Stable takes place at combat speed. So it yep. applies to reactions, including fire missions. So that is super handy. Mm-hmm. It's so good. And, and and it still has an MPA. Yep. But I, for me, I think the scariest one is the Bulwark, which has linked medium rotary lasers. And two actions. Two actions. So you can... Oh, yeah, they have two fire, actions. Or you can fire one or for the other, or if you particularly, like, hate your opponent, focus. Focus linked anything is, is horrifying. I mean, yes. Right? So it, it has link and burst. Oh my God! Yeah. Right. So the uh, in this case the medium rotary laser you're firing your you've got your two base plus burst plus linked plus stable. Yes. So five d six plus advanced. So five d six plus one in optimal range. Up. I mean the the real and the real thing to do here is you shoot them with a particle accelerator first to cripple them or haywire them I guess. Yeah. And then you rotary laser them. Or you use one of your Dirt cheap four point uh, Rika things no, to, yes, to ECM yes, Rika yes, to, that's, to, that's to hack them first. Or um, uh, note, no, I just call these guys a Striders, but they're not Striders. They're Gears, which yeah. means they're eligible for Vet and Duelist upgrades. You can yeah. put Trick Shot on that linked medium rotary laser. Yes, you can. Oh man, split between two targets on five dice plus one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's so gross it's so gross and it's strike it's not fire support only yeah it's available well, strike. Uh, I, I remember talking to barcode about this because he uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in a bit because he he used one against me i feel compelled to even out the discussion he did not like it because and this is this is something to consider it's not something i find a big deal but something to consider it doesn't have react weapons you can't yeah, Italian. I mean and that, so, that okay. came up the game I took it against John. True, true. Yeah. It does not have react weapons, but playing, but speaking as a CEF player, which has tons of two action tanks with no react weapons, it's fine. 
Uh, yeah, it, sure. It does, I, I, it, it does I, require I, a change in play. Like it is, it is sure. not the same as a normal gear, which can shoot in the reactive. Uh, but yeah. it is absolutely effective. It does, it does behoove you to plan your turn carefully as a result. Uh, but it is, right. it is absolutely fine. Yeah, I think uh, he also mentioned it. it's a lot like the, um, oh, what is it, the Sagittarius mm. tank, where it just, it's going to roll around some corner. I guess the Sagittarius gets to react with its guns, but it's going to roll around some corner and just throw lots of dice at something and make it yeah. sad. Yeah. And you can react with the uh, medium anti tank missile. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> is that not the kind of reacting? Uh, the last thing to talk about, I guess, is the the Gilgamesh, which is it's it's Ridiculous. huge. Yep, it's huge, big. I I kind of there's almost not a lot to talk about because yeah, it's like 80, 90 points. So if you take it, you're playing a different game. Yep. 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 It's cool. I want one. It's not available for my sub list, so I don't get one. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, you could yeah. just play UCAF. You know, you don't have to buy any extra models. Just play UCAF. Declare yourself that you know, is a, a defender of slippery UCAF. slope. <laughs> it does, it's a very, it's a very uh, single step on that slope. The slope is buy a Gilgamesh. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Oh. It's a, a, a nice, buttery, greasy. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. It does work, I'm sure. Uh yeah, you better have a plan for it, and if you play against it, you also better have a plan to to deal with it, or or actually accomplish objectives around it in spite of it. I guess is the way to say it. Yeah. So really, you just um, it, it is the definition of a skew list. Having one on the table, it has a bajillion guns, oh, and a yeah. bajillion hit points, and a bajillion armor. So be prepared for it to exist. Uh, oh, Stylus got a Gilgamesh Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, I guess. Oh, yeah. uh, let us know how it goes. Nice. Um, it, I mean, it, it works. Ooh. It, I, I generally tend to not personally enjoy playing lists like that. Uh, some people are all about that, uh, but you know, to each his own. Uh, it will absolutely function just fine, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. I, I want to. Um, one, uh, there was uh, someone who brought an HHT90 yep. to the heavy, heavy gear TTS tournament, and I want to like find out how every single one of their games went. Yeah, we're we're gonna talk about that uh, at some point. Uh, not this, nice. this episode, but uh, we'll definitely. If, if not in in uh, two weeks, the episode two weeks from now, we'll definitely post some stuff about it. But uh, wait, there's definitely some they're more analysis to be done. Sorry, was that Adam? So they're not unplayable. Oh yeah, no, they're absolutely usable, just, right? Like if you're not prepared for one, like they they definitely have distraction card effects written all over them, right? They they will command your attention if you spend all of your time trying to deal with it. That means you're not playing the objectives, which is meaning you're probably losing. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely a valid choice. Absolutely effective. Um, can be played around. Uh, can be misused. Right. Cool. So that's that's the the army for Utopia, or at least what they bring to the table from their own uh, selection of units. So some of the special rules we started talking about, the whole decoy Enkidu thing. Mm -hmm. So basically anytime a a drone, one of your Enkidu drones, um, is within three inches of an armager, when that armager is, the atta is attacked, the drone can choose to be the target of the attack instead. And you treat it as if the drone was in the place of the, um, of the armager. So that means it's it's not taking damage that has already occurred, right? <coughs> Is that you are full blown getting hit in place of, so you don't get to try to like evade it on the commandos, good piloting and agile, and then dump damage onto the the Anki. Yeah, yeah, you but roll that, with the Anki like, stats. Exactly. Um, it also means if you hit a AE weapon and you catch both the Anki and the Armager, the Anki will get hit twice. Uh, same thing if you split fire between the two of them, etc. It is a really cool tool to keep your armor just alive and your Enkidu dead. Um, they also have a rule called Drone Matrix, which lets you take a larger combat group of only drones. I'm I'm kind of meh on that one. Um, I I but, haven't done it yet. I'm sure it can be. Uh, I'm sure it can be done, but it's just it's just like a mess of drones. Just the 
like if I had only drones on the table, I would be worried. I like the the armagers themselves are so good and do so much of my damage and so much of my attention that uh, is spent focused on keeping them alive. That even if I had like a whole mess of drones on the table, I'd be like, well, I guess I'm rushing forward and hoping for a lot of uh, HAVM missiles to hit. Which you know maybe that's a valid strategy. It's not something that I've I've personally tried yet. Yeah, I think um, and Kidu. They're really good support units. They're cheap, single-purpose chaff, right? Yeah. Oh, we actually, we didn't touch on the support Enkidu, which is basically, they're dirt cheap, big guns. The stock one has a medium rocket pack for five points. Yeah. Um, so super cheap. You can also take a light guided mortar for five points, which is awesome, um, or seven points for light anti-take missile. Mm. Otherwise, they're roughly the same as other Enkidu. Those little weedy guys that are kind of hard to kill, but are mostly there to, to do the th- the one thing you took them for. Um, so the, the last rule that Enkidu have is that they have limited design. They can't buy any upgrades outside of AA. And it's like, okay, that's fine also. Yeah. yeah. Um, so really the big one to remember, both as a, a player of and an opponent of uh, Utopia, is that decoy rule, though. Like anything that's within three inches, just expect you have to kill that before you actually get to kill the thing you want. Oh, and remember that uh, Enkidus are um, are all natively conscript, except there's a specific Enkidu model called the Pazu that if you want to build, um, if you want to build a combat group that's of just Enkidus, you have to include him as the combat leader because yeah, he's, you... he, he's the only conscript mo- uh, non non conscript Enkidu. What do you think of Pazu? I have never taken one, and I've never considered taking one. So I, uh, so I, I had a three. Con- so uh, the battle report that we'll talk about, where I played, um, uh, it was Utopia Civil War with uh, yeah. Uto- with OUF versus uh, Barcodes OUF versus my um, UCAF. Okay. I took a third combat group, and uh, I got to the bottom of third of uh, the second turn, uh, having completely forgotten about the decoy rule. And then oh, I was no. like, oh, damn it. If I had remembered about the decoy rule, I would have deployed my Pazu group entirely differently, just spread it across, across the board, just as ablative shields for my, uh, you'll, you'll see, I, I invested a lot oh, of sure. points in upgrading two armagers, and uh, one of them just got blapped by a focused um, focused medium anti-tank missile from uh, Barcode's Marduk. It was very sad. I had a lot of defense dice and he rolled like six, five, 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 five. And I rolled like, all right, six, four, two, 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 one. Okay, I have a, I have a re-roll and I rolled even worse. I was like, oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Rika Armature. That makes me right. so sad. Because, because he had, he, um, I was playing, uh, giving him targets of opportunity, but my targets of opportunity that I was giving were crappy mm. Enkidus. And I was trying to play my Pazu group as, um, as like, oh, you guys are going to sneak up and do break the line. But they all just got wasted, and it would have been much more productive. And I just distributed them out and be like, okay, even more a blade of health for uh, my true damage g- dealers. So oh. I think that's that's a legitimate uh, uh, cause, use, use for them. Or, um, you know, just having a third combat group of um, all support armagers and be like, okay, I could just have like a pack of guided mortars um, just threatening you. Uh, you know, if, if anything else on the board in another combat group gets off a fire mission, these guys are all just going to brace and guided mortar you. So, yeah, I just... Uh, Stylus well, like is saying that Pazu are, are usable to extend command range. Is that is that true? Well, what he means is using they, one as a second in command, which then yes. gives you another commander to measure conscript. Oh, from. sure. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Fair enough. That, yes. But but stock, they don't do that. No, no, no. If they did that stock, I might consider them more. Mm-hmm. But having to go above and beyond and pay for the second command upgrade. Yeah. Second command is only a point, right? That makes well, this thing eight points. Yeah, yeah. Take conscript off a couple of things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It it depends on what your list uh, list is. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I, don't I, have... I think there's a place for it. I mean, conscript is a pretty I strong think... rule, right? It generally becomes. I mean, it's kind of like impetuous and in infinity, right? It makes things cheaper, but that's fine, right? Like, you, yeah, you, cheap cheaper and and having an activation is is better than, uh, you know, having right. having. But uh, but also like. 
like you know we talk about uh the um not um Conscript really not mattering if you're like, uh, you know, firing a bazooka, for example, because you're not you're rolling few dice as is anyway. Conscript mm. when you're um, de- when you're defensive is r- they really go down fast. And I'm much worried about much more worried about conscript making my ablative wounds die very, very quickly mm. than I am about the offensive mm-hmm. results. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I've heard some people make cases for them i i just haven't yet i mean i Um, it's it's at at this point it's definitely like what are you comfortable with right and that is often more more important than like what is quote unquote good because yeah uh, yeah yeah. like really really it's about how you use these things on the table like that's one of the reasons why we like heavy gear so much is because like infinity uh it does it does come down to uh to player skill and a lot of player skill is what is your level of familiarity with the rules and of your units and how comfortable you are using them, right? So, like exactly, like Frank was just saying, if he had remembered uh, the 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 uh, the decoy rule, then the game would have been a lot different. Uh, so, right, sure, sure. If you're very comfortable and with it's, it's, using it's, positive, it's, it's also like comes down to a lot of personal preference in terms of um, in terms of list building and how you uh, and how you how you act on the table. Like ever since, like I still uh, have perhaps some unhealthy addiction to my um, Mekong Iguana airdrop squad. And so I'm always seeking to build airdrop squads. Right. And I haven't yet uh, fought someone else who has that same focus than I do. Like someone gets, shows me a list that they built. I'm like, okay, what can I take out and move around to make an airdrop squad out of what you have? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and that's like either, either way, either way is fine. That's true. That's true. All right. So Utopia is basically divided into two sub lists. Um, the the sub list which is devout and loyal to CEF, and the sub list which is less. But also, like, you can you can quote unquote play vanilla Utopia, correct? So like, yeah, but there's I I think there's there was literally zero reason to. I disagree. I disagree. And oh. the exact uh, so and I I I very much felt this with well may, maybe uh, OUF. Uh, maybe OUF doesn't have uh, you. If you're not playing vanilla, you can play OUF. But w- w- at least when I was playing UCAF, I very much felt the um, the sub the the combat group restrictions of UCF very very hard. And but I was the, like, hey. but those combat group restrictions. Well, we'll get to those. The the restrictions are um, only if you want that that benefit. Really, I I read this as oh maybe maybe you're right. I read this as you have to choose a Rika troop, a Sorport troop, a Commander troop, or a Gilgamesh troop, and you can't deviate from these. So, but you don't have to make them into a troop. It's optional to make a unit to yeah. make a combat group into a troop. I see. Okay, I uh, okay, I got you. So, anyways, in, in, in right, general, so in heavy gear, there's no reason to to play vanilla. You should always be playing something, even if you don't take advantage yeah. of all the sublist options. Uh, sublists are the the philosophy that Rooster has chosen is to make sublists always additive. So they always add something to vanilla. Um, they always make it better in some way. Um, they don't really limit anything. Uh, sublists limit, like in comparison to one another, they may do have limits, right? So like sublist A may not may not let you take these additional units. Sublist B may let you, but sublist A has some some yeah. benefits. So, but in terms of just what you see in the army builder. Uh, the sub list is always better. Yeah. So uh, UCF, which is the Utopian Combined Armager Force, it's you get vet leaders, which is a pretty standard rule in the game. Um, they have allies with CEF, Caprice, or Eden in secondary roles only. Mm-hmm. So secondary roles, I don't usually, I usually just skip allies then. But Utopia can fill out a primary role cheap enough that it might be With, worth it. You know, four points. So, so and, in my game against Barcode, I just slapped in um, a hover bike squad. Easy. Like yep. <laughs> I, I had the points. I was like, all right, hover bikes. But let's break the line. Uh, I wound up not doing it because you know the, my Barcode was well aware of how annoying a hover bikes could be, and he dug it out. But um, but you know it was, it was low investment, and it was uh, like I'll, I'll do it again. Yeah, exactly. There's in the yeah exactly. There's some other cheap things you can just add to your army that you wouldn't otherwise normally get. Um, and then uh, their combined arms rule, which is 
each of your combat groups may <laughs> important operative word there yep. uh, be one of these specialized troops and the troops are basically broken down in the same way that we broke down the armager with their supporting Enkidu. Mm -hmm. So you've got the Riki troop, the support group, the commando troop, and then the Gilgamesh troop. Right? So if you take the Riki troop as your combat group, then <laughs> you can only have Riki armagers in there. That is the restriction. But your Riki can buy React Plus for a point. Which... So. So what what I did is I I made a Rike with a uh, with a vet duelist. I paid three points to give him advanced control system. So now he had two two uh two actions, mm -hmm. and I paid another point. So now he had I had a Rike Armager with native ECM plus, and I slapped a EW specialist because of course I am. And he had two actions and React plus. It was he was amazing. He was fantastic. That's pretty. Decent. Um. So I note that this only restricts the type of armor, armatures you can have in there. So you could um, take a special operations Riki and Kidu with some special operations um, apes, right? With that special operations upgrade, and there'd be just fine. Um, the other benefit of the group is that the Rikis can buy plus one electronic warfare, which that's for, that's a big deal for yeah, one is point it? each. I, yes, absolutely. I, I bought it as often as often as I could. Uh, On the ECMs? For, for e, both ECMs and the, re, the regular ones for TD. TD on, uh, TD on fours is a whole lot different mm -hmm. than TDs on fives. Yeah. I mean, you and know for, this. And for right. one, sat up, yeah. sat yeah. up jet bikes. Yeah. For, for, for yeah. one point, I absolutely, like, yes, I, I, I will do that. And e, ECMs, yes, obviously, to make them that much more yeah. uh, defensible with the uh, with, uh, um, firewall. But, like, yes, even for the, the target designation. Like, yeah, yes, reliable, I'm, I'm happy to pay five points for a reliable TD. Yeah. Yeah, and so, like I said, it's really good recon, really good uh, special ops roles. Mm -hmm. But that to me, that React Plus on the Riki is huge. Yeah, for one point, that's, yes, that's, yes. that's very, very affordable. Yeah, especially when that group, you can take your Rikis with the light anti-tank missiles and then have your own target designators in the groups and react off of those. It's it's lovely. Um, the second one there is the support troop. And this one has some of the scariest, I think, upgrades. So again, the only armagers allowed to have are support armagers. No restrictions on apes, no restrictions on... Mar DK or anything else. Right. Just remember, it just means you can't have commandos and Riki armager in there. Yep. Um, but support armagers can add precise and guided to their medium rocket pack for a point. Yep. That's atrocious. So that one with the medium guided mortar doing a fire mission, they have React Plus natively. Mm -hmm. So can fire off a medium guided mortar and a precise guided medium rocket pack. At something not advanced and very precise, yeah, and yes, very critically. Um, is it that, that is AP, so you're, yep. you're if you hit, you're doing one damage at yep. least. That, yep. that matters a lot. <laughs> well, I think critically, that precise works on the AE of the blast, mm -hmm. so even though it's only one dice, it's D6 plus one. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's also that's also significant. And then their, their other little benefit is that support and key use can buy plus one gunnery for one TV. Which, I mean, you and I are generally kind of lukewarm on that one, but there are people who like yeah. it. It is statistically better, no argument there. Uh, it really comes down to what your opportunity you know what? cost is. I might take it on the guided mortars. Yeah. yeah. They're only five points, going up to six points for light guided I mean, mortars. It, it depends, right? Like, it depends what your opportunity cost is. If, if, if you're yeah, losing all it. activation or like losing the ability to get a whole combat group, maybe not. If you're losing an upgrade somewhere else that is kind of a marginal upgrade, then yeah, do it. But uh, again, it really but, you just have to evaluate in context of the rest of the list. Yeah, so the problem is I might be losing another light guided mortar. Yeah, <laughs> so I'd rather just roll again. That that that's generally yeah, better. right. Yeah, um, but that that guided precise medium rocket pack, mm -hmm. at, like. The medium rocket pack on it currently is like if you shoot this thing, you know, well done. You found use for it. But once you slap those rules on there, it's a whole different weapon. Yep. 
Um, and then the uh, the commando troop, uh, commando troop. You guessed it. They can only have commando armagers, <laughs> but their commando armagers can buy an extra action for two point or for uh, two TV. Mm-hmm. Two Which, TV for instead of instead of three, so it's a savings of point. Yeah, but that's still really it. Commando commandos like this will this will come up. But like commandos are really freaking good. They're really because they are put. They are fast. They are pushing up hard. And uh, what I did is I met. I uh, you know used the vet, used the vet rule to get them vet, and then I bought brawl two for two points, and then bought bought another action. So then yeah. I can I can swing on somebody's butt twice. Or what it, what happened was a critical uh, a critical moment is I swung on somebody's butt, flew away, and then trick shotted him in the butt and somebody else in the butt, and I killed I killed them both. It was fantastic. That might be one of the few models that you ever fire mission a grenade with. Yeah. Mm. Right, because you could end up in somebody's rear arc, TD yeah. them. Sure. And then fire your light anti tank missile and indirect your grenade at them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yet, with two actions, that means you can take your commando with an ECM and a repair buddy. Yep. Oh, yes, yes, it re- yes, yeah. The 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 savings it, it affords your combat groups to make your combat groups uh, that much denser is re- is really helpful. Yeah, because that puts him up to like sixteen, and then twelve for the other two, or is it fourteen for the other two? You're still talking like thirty points for a full combat group. Mm-hmm. Pretty gross. The, the Gilgamesh troop, I mean, if you're going to run a Gilgamesh, you sh- this is the only sublist that allows it. Um, so congratulations. It also has this rule, which uh, for one CP, you can make a unit uh, ignore conscript at all if it's NK2. Which is neat. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's hard to make use of this effectively in low point games. In a large game... Yeah. It's fine, right? Like in a large game, sure. you could take a support troop with a bunch of, you know, uh, border and key dues with the gunnery upgrade. Now they're, they can be spread out and they can ignore the conscript stuff. I mean, it's situationally useful. Uh, it's certainly not going to, to make me take the Gilgamesh as like a, you know, a tactical option. I'm yeah. taking the Gilgamesh because it's freaking cool and I want it on the table and I want to make vroom vroom noises as I push it around the table. Right. 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 But like, uh, this is, this is just a nice bonus to have. It's not, it's not a, it's not to me at least, this is not like a, I'm doing this because I want this bonus. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This isn't gonna be like, Oh, well suddenly Gilgamesh is on the menu. Yeah. Right. It's like, Oh, um, this is, this is, this is so well, synergistic. Very powerful. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Barcode was saying that this army is the army of, uh, just use the box set. If yeah. you have the box set, this is a great army for it. Mm-hmm. And that box set is a ludicrously good deal. Yeah. If you, if you want to play heavy gear as your secondary game, this army appeals to you Buy the box set. You're basically done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it Splash is. Splash in a for flavor later. Uh, yeah, the box exactly. set doesn't include any apes, though, correct? And I feel like no, your no, apes no. are flavorful enough that I won't want to ignore them. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like that's that's perfect for a secondary game, right? You come in. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You you, you buy the box set. And oh, then, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Exactly. Yeah, it's a um, it, it's a perfect sub list for that box. That box is a perfect way to start there. I mean, it's like three hundred points in a yeah. box. Bonkers um, and stuff. Yep. So uh, one trick in here is you can, you can uh, ally in Caprice to get a jammer Bashan as a leader, which gives you an extra skill point leader. So that's not a bad way. <laughs> Something that uh, that Marco also mentioned. All right. So OUF. This is this is my um, my heavy gear sub faction. These are the the uh, the the freedom fighters, the liberators, the people that want to break away from the oppression of John. So <laughs> <laughs> they also have veteran leaders. Aha! Didn't see that coming. We're stealing your tech. Yeah. Um, they get no Gilgamesh, which makes me sad. They've got this. Uh, they because Greenway is part of them. Greenway Caustics is their one of their chemical manufacturing groups. 
Um, you can swap armor piercing for corrosive on one combat group's rocket packs. For that free. Is, for free. For free. <laughs> that is super cool, I think. I don't rate AP1 really that high. So being able to say, hey, I've got a bunch of AP1 in here. Why not make it corrosive instead? And if you do a corrode something on turn one, you have you have the chance to do four damage throughout the game. I know, right? So good. Um, they also get allies, uh, either CEF, Black Talons, Caprice, or Eden, again, for secondary roles, right? Um, the, the Black Talons, I think, are really interesting here because you can just take some dirt cheap and key do with a Black Talon and a secondary. Uh, here, hold on. I have I cre- uh, if you, let me know if you want to do list sharing later. I created a black talons. We've, we've and... got that coming up at the end of this segment. Okay, yep. cool, cool, cool. Got it. Um. So yeah, no, I really, really like OEF. Oh, sorry. The the the, the really big rule here though is the NAI experiments. So regardless of who your allies are, OUF can take CEF frames. Mm-hmm. But. They're required. Wait, wait so you you can t- you can take like Caprice allies, and oh, it's a, yeah, pick one. But even on top of that, pick one, you can still take NAI on top of that. Correct. Oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't so I didn't know that. It just straight up, just straight up, this force may include gears from CEF. Got it. Okay. That is separate from who you pick as allies. Oh, okay. Um. But those gears you take, so gears means frames, right? For CEF. Yeah. Yep. They will lose ANN and add conscript. Remind so, us what ANN do, did. So ANN is plus one to your uh, skills when you're active. You you pick one skill to boost. Mm-hmm. Just one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a it's a skill buff, <coughs> but so you lose that. You pick up conscript. The big thing, though, is that they count as Enkidu for the purpose of decoy. So you've you've suddenly put this totally loyal, self-sacrificing drone's brain into a larger body, more capable of withstanding those hits. Makes them insanely good bodyguards, especially any of the assault variants that you get out of the uh, the CEF frames. So the assault, assault variants all have shields. Very fancy, right? So the uh, the, the BF two twenty five is my favorite bodyguard by far. BF two twenty five assault because you're talking armor seven agile, piloting three up with a shield. If it's next to my Riki, it's going to have ECM plus on it, and that guy is taking the hits for my Riki. Uh-huh. Like good luck ever getting through that. Boo, hate it. And and still much more capable of directly impacting the battlefield. That a base Riki is. Yeah. They got yeah, exactly. And you know, you can you can start um, because you get to take them as non-allies. They are not relegated to secondary roles only. Mm-hmm. And so you can start using frames to fill out your combat groups with your uh, with your armagers and Enkidu. Yeah. So I often end up having like one armager, one frame, and a couple of drone or a couple of Enkidu. Nice. And Black Talons if you want them. Yeah, and Black Talons for fun. So it's, it is a rule I really like. Um, yeah, I like taking the F-616 anti-tanks with that uh, light particle accelerated light anti-tank missile. Gets me a cheap source of GP light anti-tank missiles. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about these lists. Uh, John, do you have which one do you have queued up? Uh... Oh, that's right. You're using your you're basically a PlayStation controller. Yep. <laughs> Everything is slower. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, it is done. Is um, this mine? I think it's mine. Yes, this is my UCAF list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let me let me open it up. So this was from my game against. I'll I'll go over my list. Um, and then we can, I guess we can uh, share some uh, screenshots from the game and go over this. So 
Um, I went, so this is two uh, two main combat groups. Each combat group had an armature, a commando armature in one and a Rika armature well, actually, in the before, other. Before we, before we get I, too far down this, maybe we should do Adam's list then. I think it's this one. It's this oh. way. Okay, sure. Because that, that way we can go into the game at the end and, and not have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call, good call. Right. So I put together a 100 point OUF list. Um, and then, which... Adam, Adam, after we go through your OUF list, I can share my OUF list that I include back talents in. Perfect. Great. Excellent. Okay, so um, I basically started. I wanted a uh, was a special ops, a strike, and a GP. Mm -hmm. And it's for for mission selection. There's so much variability in which units can be taken in which in Utopia that it's actually it's surprisingly flexible. So. I started off with that uh, missile support Riki armager that I love. Mm -hmm. The laser cannon, the anti tank missile, you know, the ECM plus, it's all fantastic. Uh, he's protected by that exact, or by that uh, BF 225. This time I ran a recon. It was mostly so I could get the sensor boom with the TD, but I could also see running an assault here. That's kind Are of. Really, you know, the same list? Apparently not. Hang on. Sorry. Let me pull this up. No worries. Okay. There, there's the list. There we go. Okay. There we go. Yep. Yep. So the missile support, Riki Armager, the BF-225 recon protecting him. It doesn't have the shield, but I can always throw my command point at it if I really need to. But what it does give me is that uh, sensor boom target designator. Mm -hmm. And then a... Um, an ECM Riki because it's four points of awesome. And then a uh, the MP Riki, which is the light frag cannon target designator. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah, this whole group is recon, of course. And like really self-sufficient. It can hit hard enough between two light laser cannons uh, and the ability to drop that guided light anti-take missile wherever I need it. Mm -hmm. And then it's also just going to be obnoxious to kill. Yes. Uh, with that ECM, yeah, the ECM plus. Uh, then I took a GP squad with two F616 anti tanks, which gets me two light particle accelerators and light anti tank missiles, mm -hmm. I, which I love. And the other thing, like, people kind of dismiss the F616. It's movement nine. It's movement nine. I can move it 18 inches and be in a great position to call in i mean just a, that just uh, that weapons package is great right you can haywire opponents yeah. you can you can then hit the, them you the know. F, the f616 that's like the the base one that's like the equivalent of the, the cheapest one yeah that's the that's the the bog standard cef thing it's, it's the, the cf by... hunter quote unquote yeah, yeah with right. that's equipped like what little laser cannon <laughs> like yeah the the standard version yeah. has a laser cannon the anti-tank version has a particle accelerator and an anti-tank missile gross yeah gross. It, is, it is it is excellent gross. so gross. Yeah, I, John, I remember uh, when I showed you Heavy Gear, you brought these guys against me, and I was like, wait, your thing has precise and advanced? Yep. I'm showing you this game for the first time. Why are your guns hitting me so hard? I'm so right. sad. Yeah. Uh, and then leading the squad is a, a trooper ape that's an Eden wizard. Mm -hmm. So just the bog standard ape um, with ECM and ECCM. I figured the three dice on four up is plenty enough to give an order when I need to. Mm -hmm. And you swapped in caustics. Yep. Oh, and then, uh, yeah. So this group is my Greenway caustics group. So it's light. It's light uh, rocket pack, which I wouldn't use normally much anyways. Has corrosion, so I might actually uh, go use that. Yeah. And it has the uh, bazooka support ape, which again has the Greenway caustics upgrade because I'm not firing its medium rocket pack because it has a medium bazooka. Mm -hmm. So if I am talking to me and rocket pack, I might as well make it something special with that corrosion roll. But this group is is so cheap and hits so hard. Uh, particle accelerators, anti tank missiles, bazookas. They're moving, um, you know, eighteen to twelve inches per mile, or yeah, uh, sixteen to eight inches because of the eight inch jetpacks. Like they just get everywhere and punch hard. And then finally, I've got a um, a commando armager, anti-tank, so a medium rotor laser and a light anti-tank missile. So take your pick. Mm -hmm. With a pair of um, the EMT commandos. Just to keep everything up and running. Just keep everything up and running. Two of them. 
Yep. And I, I didn't have a ton of points left, so I just threw in a uh, a Riki, an ECM Riki. Because why not? <laughs> just why not? My I didn't have, I, did, I had some spare points left over. Let me add this super useful thing. <laughs> yeah, if I can, you know, if it if it manages to keep up and give them an ECM bubble, cool. If not, it's gonna go be four points of like way more annoying than it should be. Mm-hmm. If someone tries to hack you, be like, nope, you're hacking me instead, and you're yeah, not gonna hack like so, it. You're like, There's so. I, I do kind of feel like with uh, with Utopia, you can get a lot of stuff that swings above their weight. Mm-hmm. Um, you also don't need to be in the same combat group for to use the decoy rule. So yeah. as you're flying around, this commando armager could end up sending X that BF-225, and you're trying to shoot it, and the 225 is taking hits to that instead. I don't think you have to be in the same combat group to uh, leverage EC, uh, ECCM firewall either, correct? Nope. Yep. Nice. Nor do you for ECM plus. Like, yep. there's so there's a lot in here where you can actually maneuver your army around and support the other elements within it with your own units, and it's fast. You know, that first group, everything is moving. Um, again, with the exception of the uh, the ECM. Or the the two little ECMing, uh, Riki, and Q, Riki and yeah. Q's. yep. Like the things that you care about are moving eight and ten. In the second group, they're basically all moving eight and nine. And this group, they're all basically moving eight. Yep. Like you, you own the table. Um, and yeah, I think this kind of shows you what you can do by taking advantage of, uh, of the OUF rules. Especially those two F sixteen or F six sixteen. Yeah, I think I, I think that's it. probably the most intriguing thing, right? Because you don't have to deal with the secondary group stuff due to the allied rules, which is very very yeah. I I feel very constricting. Yeah, right. Because otherwise, my light my light anti tank missile options are going to be on expensive armagers mm-hmm. or fire support only, um, support and kido. Right. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to take the fire support squad. I don't want I don't want to take those objectives. And they don't want to be targeted by wipe them out. So it really opens a lot. I love OUF. Um, Frank, what was your OUF? Uh, John, do you have access to the link I posted in the in the I do. doc recently? I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Okay. So oh, the, wait, so the one you I've posted been, recently. Uh. Uh. Here, I'll I'll send at the it very to end, you that right. One? Yes, I'll resend it to you. Boop, right there in Discord. Oh, um, I've, I've, I, Black Talon is really freaking cool, but I, I have no business buying into yet another faction. But this OUF list allows me to play some Black Talon, and I just, I only need two, two Black Talon models. Um, okay. but I think I, I just, I may, I put together this list literally as, uh. We were opening the show in the first like half hour there, um, oh, so it's so it's so it's untested. But I think it's pretty okay. So the first group we have um, a commando armager duelist um, yep. with uh, with trick shot and shield for the, its motor uh, medium rotary laser. Mm-hmm. Um, we have an EMT commando because you know healing is great. And I put the EMT commando. Uh, I gave it uh, smoke launchers. Oh, so if it's uh, not actually, hold on. Did we, hmm? that's a really good we, idea. Can, can, can we can we do that? Did we just say? Oh right, right. No, I think smoke launchers yeah, are okay. Oh, you can't for do that. No, only only the AA upgrade. It's the only upgrade you can buy them. Right, right. Okay, so I'll, I'll have to put that on something else. Maybe maybe the, maybe the Raven or something. Um, putting uh smoke on the commando, I I find is still very useful because um especially in the opening rounds, um while the board is developing, you generally want your commando to um to activate last in that first turn because people really want to kill it if you if you activate yeah. it first you oh, uh, if, sure. in the opening round if you will probably be very tempted to overextend it to try to like so what are you doing so you're popping smoke but, in reaction when it gets shot at yeah i no, so what likely what i'm doing is uh e- either that or i um move it up take like one shot of opportunity and then yeah just defensively deploy smoke just be like Fuck you! You're not gonna. You're. I'm. I'm already gonna make you um, really annoyed by this. I see. So if you go, is... if you move first, you pop smoke early in the turn. If you save it to the last, yeah. you pop smoke in response. Right. 
Right, Got exactly. It. Okay. And then, so, so we have the commando armager, the EMT commando. We have uh, just a regular commando and QDU rocket, just mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a as a body and as the fill points. And then the ECM commando. Again, like popping smoke, you also can pop um, ECM uh, if necessary. Either or, very useful. And then as the um, force leader for this, we have an Alpha Raven. Um, Ravens are stacked. My goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my goodness for such a small little thing that's made of paper it's armor 533 mm -hmm. but it's got hands agile vet airdrop comms oh by the way this is an airdrop squad everything here is airdrop comms oh, TD, okay. comms td ecm plus eccm sensors 24 jetpack 6 stealth um yeah, and I gave it uh I it has native vet, so I gave it EW specialist. And it's got um four gunnery and critically it already has piloting three, uh piloting three agile and EW three. So with EW specialist, it's gonna be rolling four dice mm -hmm. on EW three. I, I don't think anything has better than EW three. It's you can get it in Peace River, good. but you have to buy it. Yeah, you 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 and you have you have to work for it. So th so this guy like it makes me a little nervous to have him have it uh, uh, an airdrop force commander, but yep. this guy's gonna he's gonna be really. really so this guy's hard attached to, to the down. first squad. And, is that what's going on? Yes, I see. yes, it okay. is. He's he's airdropping with those uh, with those commandos, and you know you don't have like just like Infinity, you don't have to infiltrate to the twenty four line. You can yep. just airdrop like some somewhere really annoying. Yeah. Um, and then the second squad is uh, is a is a is a squad of apes and a and a dark mamba kai. It's got um a fire ape Eden wizard, um for the combat uh combat group leader just because oh. you know pop uh popping, um ECM uh getting EC an ECM bubble up is is pretty crucial. Um, I gave him the Greenway caustics because just having ranged um mm -hmm. range annoyance threat while he's wheel toting around on a um a fire weapon is really handy um then i have a regular fire ape also with greenway caustics, caustics a trooper ape with um a, a light submachine gun and a lap goal um and react uh, rocket pod mm -hmm. um and i gave him smoke launchers because you know i'm yeah. always i'm like personally i'm always wanting to combine uh ecm, ECM and, and smoke, smoke. And, and cover sure. it like as much as possible. It just sure. makes things really annoying to kill. Plus three um, I got a grenadier. Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, a grenadier ape. Um, he's just got an LGL and LRP, and then I got the dark mamba Kai, which is uh, armor seven, four two. He's gunnery three, piloting three, so he's real good. Medium grenade launcher, and he's got um a brawl reach uh light combat weapon, mm -hmm. which is you know nothing nothing to sneeze at. Like if he. If if something's um, posting up in uh, an annoying ECM bubble, I always like to have the option of going into melee yeah. to um, to to bring it down, and uh, and yeah, he's got na native vet and stealth. He's he's real good. So you know you have you have two two black talon mechs leading uh, commandos and apes. It's these it's real. Yeah, man, really man black ta black ta black talons are expensive. Um, yeah, but, they are. Uh, but you know, this is this is a squad I'd like to put together, and I think it's worth at least table time. Maybe I'll refine this list, but I don't think you can probably fit more than two black black talons in a hundred point list. No, uh, maybe at 125, 150 you could, but mm -hmm. you got to have a hard time fitting in two black talons in a black talon list. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Um, something that I might consider if you can find a point somewhere, you could swap that raven for an owl instead. I mean, yeah. just yeah, drop was, that smoke, was, that the drop yeah, the illegal smoke, and there you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. Because it it doesn't roll as many dice uh, because it doesn't have the EW specialist, but it still is rolling, um, you know, three dice on threes to give an order. That's plenty. Uh, yeah. It has the ECM. It has. Um, but it, uh, it, it doesn't loses have ECM the sensors, plus, right? Like the I feel like it doesn't lose. It doesn't. It have does sensors. lose the sensors. Yeah. I guess it, it depends on what your goal is. Uh, it's a lot tougher at armor seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I w having yeah. faced both, I would say the owl is generally more annoying. <laughs> like I've, I've, as Adam well knows, I've had Grell infantry squads delete Ravens before. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Oh. Yes, you have. But. Very sad. Yeah, mixing in, I, I've definitely had my eyes on the the Utopia Plus Black Talons. Yeah. Most 
my excuse to get into them. I only need to buy two two mechs for this. Right. I got everything else. Nice. And just two more. Just two. Just, just two, two more. more. Two more. Two <laughs> yeah. more. You know, you you'd really be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't also get a vulture. <laughs> and might as well get a dark coyote then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just get Did a couple dark get warriors dark? to pet things <laughs> out. I think it's perfect. So uh, tell us a bit about this game. Let's see the list you you ran. Yep. So, so the, this is the, going to be uh, UCAF or what is it? Uh, yeah, OUF UCAF. versus UCF. Yeah, U- Utopia Civil War. So um, I'll go over. Uh, I'll go over my UCAF list. Um, it was a uh, Commando Armager uh, Anti Tank VTOL. Um, I gave this guy um, all the things. I upgraded him to vet. Yeah, I upgraded a vet. I leveraged who dares, which gives him a second action for only two TV. Mm-hmm. I gave him brawler two and trick shot. Um, and he so with two actions, all he needs is two more to pad out his combat group. So he's got an ECM commando um, and commando, and these all have the VTOL upgrade. That's combat group one. Um, my combat group two is a Rika armor guru. This guy turned out to be expensive. He also has Jesus. all the upgrades. He's got twenty three points. A vet. <laughs> yes, he's he's base. He's like tank tank level expensive, um, and he did he did great until just some very unfortunate rolls, and I was very foolish and didn't have a buddy to take the hit from. Mm-hmm. Uh, veteran leaders for two, uh, his vet for two, quiet death for one. So he's got the react plus EW specialist. So he's got a he's got a, a fourth die, um, duelist advanced control system. So again, he has two actions and react plus, and I gave him shield mm-hmm. and smoke. So sure. he is like, especially with uh, bodies around him to take hits for him, he should be like nigh unkillable unless you get into melee with him and chop him up in melee. Um, with him, I got an ECM Rika, um, a regular Rika, and an MP Rika, um, just because I wanted two sources of um, mm-hmm. of uh, of TD, um, and then you know the ECM just just to um, to firewall in case anyone wanted to hack him. And then my third group. Was a Pazu, you know, as as the leader, um, two ECM, two ECM Rikas and regular Rikas. All three of those upgraded with Silent Assault. So I have two ECM Rikas uh, now with uh, four plus and a regular Rika who can uh, TD on a four plus. And as a secondary to that third group, I have a single a single Grell anti tech hover uh, hover bike squad. Just, just to remind you know, everybody, Silent yeah. Assault is uh, improvement to EW skill. Right, right. Sorry, say again. I'm just reminding everybody that silent assault is an oh, one, sorry. is a yes. one point improvement yes. to the uh, EW skill. Yes. So for yes. So so for three points, I invested in improving three guys from five ECW uh, to four, mm-hmm. and then yeah, finishing off with a single Grell anti tank hover hover bike squad. You know, I like taking the anti tank infantry. They tend to attract a little more attention, but like fine if you're shooting at him and not shooting at someone something else, that's fine. Um. Barcode took. Uh, let me, let me think. He took. He took OUF. He took. Um, he took a, a Bashan. He really likes the Bashans that are upgraded to be Force Combat leaders. A whole yeah. mess of. Um, yeah. Of, Three orders. Uh, of. Yes, or, orders. A EW specialist throwing ECM plus. It was very very annoying. He had a combat group that was a, a Marduk with a um, with a Madams and a support armature. And then he had another group that was two fire apes, a Rika armager, and an F six six sixteen um, using an AI. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. If you want to post to the first uh, the first image there, um, this was uh, my side of the deployment. Um, you can see uh, I wound up deploying my commando squad on the far left um, behind that building. I was like I I originally I very much was like this guy he's this is my threat vector. He's gonna yeah. want to dig these guys out. I want to keep them safe. Um, those um, those green patches in the middle, those had were covered with forest area terrain, just for everyone's sanity. I just deleted the trays. The, oh, the I see. Tra- the the, those grassy patches are actually forest, is what you're saying. Got yeah, it. those okay. are all forest. We were like, we're, we're I'm just deleting the trees. You know, we, we just know that they're yeah. area terrain. 
Yeah, exactly. And okay. so that, that's the, uh, the Rika and his buddies. And then behind that building on the far right, that's my Pazu squad. Again, had I was had I been not a fool and remembered uh, the, the decoy, decoy, rule. decoy yeah. rule, I would have very liberally um, spread at least one extra um, uh, NQ out Nearby, uh, across the to, map. Just yeah, to eat shots. Just to, Right, exactly. And then the ne the next um, image is barcodes uh, deployment um, on the leftmost building. You can see is support armature um, on that rooftop immediately to that building's right. It's uh, it's gray, but you can see the Marduk. He he was basically determining these guys are going to sit here and be very very scary with their very powerful long range weapons. Um, he upgraded the support armature to have two actions. Mm. Um, if I recall correctly, um, in the center, he has his jammer Bashan mm -hmm. um, on two of the um, tall uh, skyscrapers. He had his fire apes upgraded with caustics. Um, the caustics wound up not doing much, but other but they scared me. And sometimes scaring your enemy and affecting your enemy's movement is all you need to do to be effective. And in that way, they were. And then down on the ground, uh, he had his Rika Armager and uh, F616 um, to the right. And so if you go to the next image, we are playing a superiority, which is basically a uh, quadrant control. I move up my positive squad. I'm really feeling the compare like six inches is not not bad, but it's not great either. Especially this board is like it's a little open. It is an urban board, but it it still felt a little open. What what's, uh, what did you consider the, the building's medium cover? We considered almost everything medium. There were four buildings that were like taller than five stories uh, tall that we designated as heavy cover. So like the and big, so that like yellow, white, and yes. red thing is heavy. Yeah. yeah. The so the mm -hmm. you can you can see the 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 bottom objective uh, that's green right there. The building directly in front of uh, in front of it on the top that's uh, heavy cover. So the buildings of that type were designated as heavy cover. So I wanted to hide these guys. I basically just ran them up and spent my actions um, either trying to hack the support armature, which wound up not to be viable because it turned out to be out of sensor range. And that's where not having advanced sensors on uh, those ECM uh, yeah. Rikas turned out, turned out to hurt. It's like 18 mm -hmm. inches is, is it's it, long, I really, but, but still yeah, short. It's, right, yeah. It's it, like it, it, You can't even... You can't even be like, oh, I'll just take uh, one dice dice less, like like you can with weaponry. It's just yeah, like, so no, yeah, I guess I can't do the thing. Yeah, yeah so so right. you know, having having most of the buildings be medium and being able to censor through them, as opposed to heavy where yeah. you cannot, uh, makes this board very yeah. open as far as as, yeah. as hacking is concerned. But I suppose right, exactly. Uh, if you don't have a lot of sensors, it it does limit your range a little bit. But you can do like hack from the other side of the building thing, which is totally fine. Right, and. So what I did is I just pushed them up and I just like, all right, I'm spending my actions just to post ECM up. I like yeah, some of my sense. guys, uh, you can see my my grill hover bike like behind cover there. I'd be like, I'm likely going to bait attacks from the support armature and the Marduk, but I feel like that's fine. Which you one's know, the hover bike? Get, like, the, the pink one uh, behind the building? The, on, the, on, on the far right, um, he's uh, he's uh, touching us a, uh, oh, a, tree. a little uh, square with a tree. Yes. Yeah, yeah I yes, got he's on this a guy right here. Okay. Right. Yeah, and so he's he's covered by the ECM bubble right behind him, and they would have to be shooting through cover. Sure, it was like, sure. it's, it's like you know, if if you're spent, if you're shooting my Quang Shi with an avatar, fine. Like, I, not not, not well, the end of the well, world. Well, well, like, I mean, sure, this. but the, this Quang Shi moves 24 inches a turn. So. Sure, 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 sure. I I was like reasonably confident about his survivability because yeah, he has four dice and agile, mm -hmm. um, you know, cover ECM and. Yeah. Um, but if you sneeze on him, he explodes. So <laughs> sure, that. sure. I, but right. But but my plan at this point was to move up the rest of the squad, and yeah. I was like, get. I I knew he was going to be a high value target. Like, fine, shoot him. He's not. He's not. Critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, I I feel like that's reasonable. You, like, I I if I had more than one hover bike, I might expose it. But yeah. Right. I I, I considered him a bonus, uh, bonus anyway. So. Uh, he he wound up dying a terrible death. Basically, what what happened is we we go back and forth, um, just pushing things up. He he shoots uh, his caustic rockets at me. Winds up doing a single caustic damage, and then winds up finishing, um, and uh, finishing up one of my um, Rika uh, and Kidus, um in an area of effect attack. So the caustic didn't even have a a chance to actually proc. Um, it didn't even have a chance to you know trigger a damage roll, but um. But you know the, the, those apes on the on the middle rooftops were scary, and I wound up um, 
spent shooting up my Rika to spend an action to hack and then spend another action to focus, uh, focus and spend the action and react plus to light laser cannon them, uh, which turned turn out okay. I wound up crippling them both. Um, if we get down to uh, the next image, as the as the um, board developed, I had shot up my um, my commando squad, and um, it was my commando squad versus his Rika and his Rika armager and his F six sixteen. And what happened is, is this was bottom of turn three, and I my commando my commando was um, was crippled because I was a fool. I didn't have an Enkidu um, within three inches. He got mm-hmm. he got um, he got grazed by one of those linked. ATM shots that was a uh, target designated yep. by the by the as F16 and that that, yep. that crippled him immediately. Thankfully, he still has VTOL and um and 10 inches of movement. So he, he still um wound up getting into base-to-base contact with the Rika Armager's butt and whacking it, whacking it with a sword with two uh, two actions. Um and then uh top of turn three. I I am not entirely sure if this was legal, but what happened is it was very obvious that whoever was going to win initiative, that combat group was was going to die. Either his Rika Armager and his F-616 were going to pulverize my commando or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So we roll initiative. uh, I win initiative. He's like, okay, spending command point uh, because I get like a five or something. I spend a a command point to re-roll. He he, um, he re-rolls, matches my thing exactly okay like, okay so we re-roll, re-roll again we, we re-roll initiative i win he says so i don't know if this is legal or not he says i'm gonna spend a command point again and in my brain i'm like yeah that's totally fine it's it's like a new initiative role like it's a it's yeah. a different role yeah it's, okay. it's, it's not the same it's not the same face to face right and he ties again oh my gosh He's and sick. so he ties exactly again and i roll we roll initiative again i win again he re-rolls. We tie one more time. Oh, so he spent no. three command tokens <laughs> trying to get initiative. We re-roll one more time, and I win. And he's like, I can't I can't spend any more command tokens. Either he was out or he was just like, I've accepted my fate. <laughs> and <laughs> <Right>. so what? <laughs> this is where my commando armager was like, I have two actions. Swing. Swing against the Rika. I brought it down to like one or two health or something. And then zoom uh behind i I zoomed uh managed to catch the f616 in my um optimal range band and i trick shot both of them destroying the rika um and either crippling crippling or destroying uh the the f616 i i forget which and then from there um yeah from there his decision to post the uh marduk and the support armager up on rooftops um which was very scary and very worrisome his marduk like just blasted my Rika armature to smithereens. I was so happy with, you know, cover, base two dice, ECM plus, and smoke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just uh, sometimes the dice gods are cruel to you. I had the shield reroll, and he was like, all right, uh, I got a focused medium particle accelerator. Um, and uh, he rolled real good. I rolled not good enough. And I was like, this is, with advanced, you're going to cripple me. I don't. I don't want to be crippled. This is too early, and like I yeah. have extracted enough utility out of this freaking twenty-three point bottle. Luck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reluck. And you know, I was like, well, the haywire from the MPA doesn't even proc now because I'm just flat dead. It was very oh, sad. No. But, um, oh, that's sad. <laughs> but, but the uh, the Marduk and the support armager being on those rooftops proved to be his undoing. Because I killed a, I killed enough models. He had a very low model count, mm. and then the last turn was just spent. I'm s- splitting my guy across the wind to capture, to capture the objectives. If we go onto this, yeah, to the, this last image here, I was like, my Pazu is not in coherency of anything, but I am gonna make you focus actions on it by running it right into the middle of your objective and this quadrant's objective to not to make you, make yeah. you shoot me. Right. If you want to get this objective point, and that worked, he was like, "Well, I want that objective point, and I want to knock you off. Of, like, I don't want you contesting here. My two main guns are on rooftops, and they're trapped there. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I managed to get, I managed to get uh, a break the line uh, point accidentally. I got a pave the way point, and I got um, two objectives, uh, two two center objectives, and three quadrants. He managed to get um, either one or two." 
of his own objectives and one quadrant. So I think I think the final score was six to three. Um, Rough. Barcode wound up not liking. It. <laughs> he was like, ah, I hate the Marduk because it's a it's a board game. Uh, type unit like it has no react weapons and i'm like yes it does have that like limited like comparatively limited like interactivity but he also posted it on a rooftop whereas i feel like the marduk wants to be rolling around the ground scaring the bejesus after me chasing me even if you're rolling even if you're going top speed you know with with its linked weapons it's still proposing a, a serious threat um and the support armagers like still did well on the rooftop especially rolling um both of those guys getting, I think, gunnery, gunnery two plus was real, real gross um, because of being elevated. Um, the support armager, I think, is better suited to being on a rooftop because he had very good sources of guided mm-hmm. um, and that long laser cannon. But the Marduk in particular, just I think it's just so suited to moving yeah, around. Yeah, you, well, you, you, it's fire and maneuver basically, right? You wanna, you wanna yeah. shoot, scoot, shoot, scoot. Right, right, and, and you know, getting gunnery two. Definitely real good sometimes, but I've what you give up in terms of positional advantage. Yeah. Um, you know yeah. the 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 support armager at least has <laughs> it at least has hands, so in a pinch it can it can climb down or like try to fall down. Mm-hmm. The Marduk doesn't even have that. He was like the Marduk is like I was somehow dropped by a helicopter with really big parachutes here, and now I'm trapped on top of this <laughs> six story building with no way to get down. <laughs> I mean, it might have clay hands, but should it be able to climb? It'd be like no, watching somebody I, in a wheelchair yeah. trying to take a ladder. No, you know, like yeah. That, yeah, it doesn't really yeah. quite work. Um, right, yeah. I mean, we've all, we've all so, been there. We've always put some, we've, we've all put something on a roof, and then at the end of the game, you're like, well, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where it was yeah. all game. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, no, I think, I think uh, we can kind of s- sum up Utopia as... It's a pretty, it's a really unique army, right? Like, yeah. it's not going to look anything like an army of another faction, um, both aesthetically and in terms of gameplay. Mm-hmm. To me... I, I, I think it is it is a higher skill floor army because your valuable units are comparatively more expensive. Like, one action for 13 yeah. points and not React Plus, is, it, it's, it's a little tough. And yeah. so keeping them alive with, DQ, with decoy and with your ECM uh, stuff, like... As I said, that order of operation really matters. Where you, yep. you, if you're, if you're like, okay, if I want to attack in this position, I need to send my ECM in the correct position so right. my attack piece can can finish his finishes at his movement and his action, protected by that bubble and protected by yeah. a potential decoy. Yeah. So and for, the army, it, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. it's fine. Go ahead. I was gonna say it, it kind of resembles like the. Uh, a huntsman and its hounds. Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. Like, you're not going to take, you're not often going to take a unit of just like, here's four armagers because it's so many freaking points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a unit that is one armager and three drones, I think, is very common. I, I, I haven't yet done it. I, because the, because UCAF's troop, um, improvements are so valuable and so good i probably wouldn't do this on ucaf but maybe for ouf i think it would be really interesting to combine say a rika armager and a commando armager in the same group just because they have uh oh sure because they have equivalent movement speeds um the 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 native ecm plus is like a very very big deal and you don't like you know i spent a ton of points upgrading each one of my guys you don't need to do that you can upgrade like one of them and just provide well, EW specialist yeah. right right you know the 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 or, or just give one of them smoke you know and then yeah. just pat just passive uh passive ecm plus and you know deploying smoke or some something um really makes uh for a much more concentrated um you know bulk of firepower that you can still bring you know happy little buddies to keep your dudes alive okay so I just want to do a quick, a few, a few quick summary things regarding Utopia from my perspective, as well as uh, talk about how to fight Utopia. So, yeah. as a sort of first, you know, first order approximation, um, Utopia sort of requires you to think a little bit more about order of operations, like Frank has been saying, as well as positioning. So, if you're playing, say, like a North list, and you have a bunch of um, stump cannon armed hunters, you can sort of like drop them wherever you want on the table. You're not going to get the formation bonuses. They're not really all that relevant. 
uh, like, you, you know, they, they kind of matter, but if you have ECCM and a reasonable commander, you can get let them have it off without too much difficulty. So, like, maybe it's fine. Uh, in this case, with Conscript, and more importantly, the decoy rule, you really do want to keep things together. So you tend to cluster a lot more, um, and so your your best source of defense is clustering, but that also opens you up to AE weapons, right? So area of effect yeah. is a bigger deal for you. You can sort of mitigate that with decoy, but then again, your decoys will tend to drop. So that sort of is an argument for I, why Pazu are good, right? Because then, I, then you can every have time more I bodies. Every time I lost an Enkidu, I was I was very sad because I was very acutely aware of how much points I had spent into my armagers, and each loss of Enkidu, I was like, I'm I'm really scared now. I don't want to lose yeah. these guys. So it can be frustrating to only kill Enkidus, but you you have to be like, I'm still doing good. I, if you're if yeah. you're killing yeah. like if you're killing like three four Enkidus like a turn, like you're doing really good work. Like uh, like um I I have the analogy of um. So, uh, like, a, a friend who was really frustrated uh, playing Toha, playing mm -hmm. against Toha, mm -hmm. and he was like, all I did first turn was, uh, was uh, you know, uh, eliminate four symbiote mates. And I was like, That's no, huge. you did amazing. If yeah, you if, if so you dropped big. four symbi if you dropped four symbiote mates against Toha, they are so scared and they are so less prone that they they cannot yeah. be as aggressive. They can't they can't so be, like they it, can't it, take it, risks, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's it's very similar. If if you're dro if you're dropping drones, just your your first, you you have to think about constraining the um the the movement of the armatures and be like I ha I have to kill these dudes. And you know the NQ dudes like yeah they 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 might have ECM stuff, but their 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 stats aren't great. If you get some uh airdrop frag cannons or airdrop snub cannons and you manage to shoot an NQ in the back, it's gonna die very quickly. And a lot of factions have. Um, access, access to that sort of thing uh, yeah 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 exactly so i mean i guess i guess that's but that's sort of the issue right because generally it's not the enkidu that are doing the stuff right like they're not putting out a no. huge amount of damage they're doing a lot of chip damage they're doing uh like you know sort of add-on damage to stuff they finish things off but they're not really the big heavy hitters they're probably not even the objective grabbers in a lot of situations so um how do you fight them well should you spend a lot of effort killing them I mean, you're sort of removing ablative wounds and stuff, but I guess really the point is, unless you have specifically teched or just so happened to have the right tools, right? So let's say you have you have a grenadier thing with uh, linked grenade launchers, and you're like ready to go, and you're like, oh great, perfect, I have I have the anti utopia button, and I'm gonna push it as 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 hard and as long as I need to, um, but you might not be in that position, so. Really, it boils down to like any other game where there's sort of a, 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 a tough nut to crack. Well, what do you actually have to do to win? And that is probably just do the objectives that you can do and do your best to prevent the, your opponent from doing that, doing their objectives. Um, and one of the things that Utopia can do very well is that we looked at, we, we spent a lot of time talking about their high movement rates. We also spent a lot of time talking about how uh, survivable they are because of their ablative wounds and their ECM plus access. So those two things put together mean they can be anywhere on the board and stay there and make it annoying for you to remove them. Um, so you just sort of have to set up the table in in such a way where that you like either pull them towards areas where they don't necessarily want to be, but they have to be, right? So like if you if you have a target of opportunity, right? Like let's say you force them to choose or maybe they chose pave the way, you can pull your, your pave the way targets away and, and force them to come to you and therefore not be in position to hold their own objectives and you can sw swoop in from the other side, right? So it's a lot of like, they can, they, once they make a decision to be somewhere, uh, even with their speed, they sort of have made the decision. And so you can punish them yeah. by by forcing a bad decision on them uh, and then, uh, and then uh, capitalizing on it. So... And it, it so is, they, they yeah. very much want to they they very much want to cluster, but the further you force them to extend, clustering gets hard. I was punished very very harshly, yeah. um, both playing Utopia and playing my my Mekong list. I was like I they they have like a a black box iguana um, specialist that's just really annoying me and calling a TD and I really need to kill it. And um, it was situated just perfectly around the terrain that I was like if I dig it out. Um, my my whole combat squad is going to be in total disarray. I'm not going to have the same EW and smoke bonuses I'm mm -hmm, used to. Mm -hmm. And I wound I wound up killing it, but I lost my um 
my two iguana uh, MPs um, like at top of turn two, and that was real bad. It it it, it cost me the game, and so like forcing them to extend further than further than they're close, the, the further than they're comfortable doing will cause that coherency to break up. Um, I also very quickly uh, wanted to um, correct me if I'm wrong. If the decoy and kidu rule says when an armature is targeted by a direct or indirect attack, a melee yeah. attack is neither one of those. A melee attack is a is a third thing. And so attacking armatures with close combat units, the Enkidus cannot dot cannot use decoy. So you can stab an armature to death. And they're made of paper. They've got they've at got good one piloting. point I believe that was the correct interpretation, but uh I am uncertain now because I haven't played against utopia in a while and things have may have changed and also i have many I different think, versions okay. of the rules i think it still holds up if you look at the weapon the weapon reference yeah under mode for like vibroblades it says m instead of d or i yeah i think it's fine yes. that's why yeah yeah i'm just um, i'm just i'm just being uncertain because there's i have so many rule systems floating out of my head now <laughs> it's really sure, sure sure I, I i think i think it's worth asking Though because of that lack of D or I, I was like, uh, yeah, and I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so we're we're worth inquire worth inquiring about. <laughs> I'm I'm um, pretty sure that's how say, it works, but but definitely definitely yeah. a, a, an authoritative ruling would be good. Sure. Um, one of the worst things you can do against Utopia for yourself is take the assassinate objective. Oh sure. Like yeah. Yeah, you. Their big thing is that their commanders have a bajillion T ablative wounds that don't even have to come from the same combat group. Yep. Right. Um, unless you have a really good plan for it, think about your objectives just as much as you're if thinking you're about playing your Eden, and you're gonna jetpack a lance in there. Sure. If you're gonna rocket a bunch of bees, <laughs> then then you might be able to pull it off. Challenge accepted. But right, oh no. But yeah, no, just like, <laughs> don't. What have I done? Don't play into their strength. Yeah, like that is that is going hard mode. Definitely. And uh, and you know we, we we talked a lot about uh, the the um, Rika's uh, and Kudus having you know ECM and ECCM. They're great. The commando uh, the commando uh, ECM and Kudus don't have ECCM. So you yep. can still you so hay, haywiring the command squad and haywiring the the supports is still going to be like very value. You just have to be uh, judicious about um, what what targets your uh, what targets you're throwing around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, cool guys. I think that wraps up Utopia. Well, right. another perfectly good evening listening to late night war games. John, take it away. All right. So remember to write in to mailbag at latenightwargames.com with questions, comments, anything else you want us to let us know, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, just a reminder that we're switching to a bi-weekly schedule. So not next week, but the week after, we'll have our Infinity content. That is also when we're going to uh, do the Roman Academy painting, judging uh, results, right? So the results are, are in, but we're going to tell you about them two weeks from now. Uh, and then I will release the new Bromad Academy painting contest before that. Uh, I just haven't had time to make the art assets for that yet. So that's happening. Um, let us know how you feel. If you feel strongly about it, let us know at bailbag at landingwargames.com, as I just <laughs> said. Um, we'll be here every other Tuesday, uh, but we do have shows Monday and Wednesday night at 8.30 Pacific. Uh, we're here every other Tuesday at the same time slot. Uh, and then, of course, we have Tim and Clint doing Tabletop Throwdown on Sundays, uh, I believe at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and I believe we'll be resuming our Moonstone Mayhem now that the holiday season is over. Nice. And uh, Paul will be back from his trip uh, with his family. So, um, yeah, sort of a bit of a stutter step in, in last week's uh, um, uh, show. But, uh, yeah, holiday stuff happens, family stuff happens, and snow happens. So that was the thing. Um, right but yeah uh let's see uh of course a big thank you to all of our late night war games on wait late night war gamers on patreon uh and to our sponsors dream pod nine mythic games corvus belly board and brute and brutal cities if you want to support us you can do so by clicking all of the buttons to 
uh, like and subscribe on all the various channels and whatnot. Uh, we do upload all of this <laughs> stuff to um, both YouTube and to all your favorite podcast apps. So you can listen to us in the car if you'd like. Um, and then you can also do uh, Patreon support as well. Um, we will be getting out the, um, the minis from last quarter uh, pretty soon. Once Adam digs himself out from being under the weather, uh, and and we'll, yep. we'll do that probably uh, if not next week, the week after, uh, and uh, yeah, we should we should have some some fun more surprises in store for you. Um, but yeah, I think that that's it. Right, that that's the show. All right. Well, thanks everybody <laughs> for joining us. Happy well, New Year. Please stay safe out there. Um, we will see you in two weeks to talk about Infinity. So long. Take care, everybody. Uh, 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 won't you play games with me? And I like to do everyone. That's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. That's what I really like to do. That's what I really like to do.